<clears throat> welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome to Classic Cast. We are here with Tips Out Baby. We're here with Stay Safe TV, and we're here with Crom, our friend Crom. We uh, we all just got back from BlizzCon, and th there's really a lot that's happened over the course of the last few weeks. Uh, whether it's the demo, whether it's the news we got at BlizzCon, um, and uh, really, there's just a lot to talk about. So, uh, Crom, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, hi, I'm Crom. I'm sure you guys have seen me hanging around the uh, Classic Cast boys a lot. I play WoW, pretty much only WoW. See me around, I'm the loud, angry, bearded dude with the weird voice, so. There you go. And Crom, Crom was actually at BlizzCon with us, and we were hanging out mm -hmm. a ton at, during BlizzCon. Yeah. He's a very yeah. meaty human being. Love us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, was, that was top comment when I met everybody. You're a lot bigger than I thought. There you go. <laughs> yeah, dude, I don't know why. I thought you were going to be like five foot eight, five foot nine tops. Here he is six foot one, six foot two, taller than me. I, 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 I don't know, man. It was, pretty, it was mind blowing. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, so it, it was a really good time. We had a really good time at BlizzCon and uh, hanging out with Crom and hanging out with everybody there. Uh, we got we got a lot of news. We got a lot of news at BlizzCon. Um, some good, some not not quite so good. But uh, the good thing is, I think a lot of the stuff that wasn't quite so good isn't particularly uh, set in stone yet, which is good. So uh, I, I know I I know I came out of that classic panel a little bit hot. So a lot of you guys know that. <laughs> but yeah, no, we've we've uh, we've kind of talked about it a little bit since then uh, on all of our streams. But what was your guys' favorite part of BlizzCon? Crom, do the honors, man. Uh, yeah, Crom, go ahead. Gosh, I don't know. I mean, it's tough. It's between two things. Like, I got to meet a lot of people I was expecting to meet, but, like, going in the BlizzCon and seeing, like, the, the classic WoW demo set up and watching all my friends go from business mode to just straight children and the snap of a finger was my absolute favorite moment. Everyone running to computers and sitting down and logging in and looking at everybody like, dude, 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 it's the coolest. That was, for me, that was the the... the top tier moment for blizzcon yeah it was really awesome what about, what about you tips um yeah that that's a, that was a big one definitely um because i honestly didn't think we were going to be able to test the demo until after the opening ceremony mm -hmm. but then it was available right there on the floor as soon as we got in um but but i think but i think more than that is just meeting you guys meeting the people out there fishy lawn gnome dj love drop zavage Meeting the classic WoW devs, meeting Chrome obviously, and, and everybody else there, just putting faces behind this community that that we've known for the past year now, and just getting to meet everybody, hang out with everybody is that, that's the thing I'll remember the most, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. GM as well. What's up, Mr. GM? He's in chat. But yeah, yeah. I've got a copy of you guys. I mean, over the weekend uh, down at BlizzCon, I had maybe 40 or 50 people come up and introduce themselves and shake hands and hug it out and take photos. It was awesome. Uh, like Tip said, putting a face behind the, behind, uh, behind a face to the community, I guess. It was mm -hmm. pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I think, uh, yeah. I mean, it's kind of hard to top that. Like, I, I think the, um, I think that's the most important thing, right? Because, like, everybody's sitting here, like, we're, we're, we're nerds. We're sitting here behind our computers all day. <laughs> so to, to finally get a to finally get a chance to like you know meet people and talk to people whether it's go outside <laughs> yeah go outside yeah whether whether it's uh people who who watch our stuff whether it's people who you know we we do stuff with uh i don't know i think all that's really cool i think all of that's really really cool so very very special experience like blizzcon going going to you know all of us actually that was the first time all three of us had had been in the same spot and all four of us really have been in the same spot and gotten to meet together that's right um yeah. And that was really cool, but BlizzCon itself is just kind of, that's what's going on, but the main thing is, is I think, just getting to meet everybody and, and see everybody, and I think that's really cool. Um, I gotta say, like, when I, so during at BlizzCon, I met Crom and Tips for the first time. S1 and I have hung out a lot, but Crom mm -hmm. and Tips the first time meeting. Um, and when I met you guys, it wasn't even, it's like we had already met and already hung out before. Yeah, it's like there not weird. No, yeah, there was yeah. no ice to break or anything like that. It was just already jumping right into it so yep. true yeah absolutely so true like i just like yeah you just jumped right into it like it, it didn't feel like you were meeting somebody for the first time for sure mm -hmm. yeah I, I thought that was really cool um so I, you know lovey-dovey stuff aside okay let's get down to business let's talk uh, about ooh. some of the classic stuff right let's let's talk about the classic stuff um we did get a lot of news at blizzcon i almost said it classic ass at blizzcon about classic uh, at the opening ceremony, they said summer 2019 is the release, which uh, I don't think 
shocked, maybe not quite shocked, but definitely surprised is how I felt. Uh, I, I was surprised that it was going to be that soon. I thought that was about as early as they could do it. And to commit to that at BlizzCon was, was surprising. I thought they would more, uh, I thought they would, they would say like when they're going into testing or something like that, but to, to give us a, a release time frame, I think was about as much as we could expect. Um, or as we could yeah, hope for, I'm, rather. I'm surprised they gave a time frame, but as far as the time frame goes, I mean, I've been calling that time frame since uh, since Classic was announced, you know, yeah. over a year ago. That's what I always thought. So it was like, you know, everyone else was like, well, you, uh, they thought they'd drop it on the 15th anniversary. Next yeah. BlizzCon. So I was like, yeah, I got it. So that was pretty cool. But uh, <laughs> uh, I like like you said, man, I'm very surprised that they committed to a time frame. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Like, I think, again, like, that was the window that, that, that I saw as well. I just think the interesting thing about it was I thought they would announce maybe some kind of playable alpha or maybe tell us, oh, you've got Classic on the floor today, but in a couple of months, you'll have Classic WoW on the beta or the alpha or something like that. Uh, for them to announce the actual release date was incredibly surprising. But I do want to say, summer sounds close, but uh, I went and did some research. The two other times that Blizzard has said, only two other times they've said an expansion is coming in the summer, was Mists of Pandaria and Legion. And both of those happened in the last week of August. So if I'm not mistaken, summer can technically go into like the first two weeks of September. So it's close and it could be close. It could be seven months away, but it could also be 10 months away, depending. So it's it's one of those things that's kind of bittersweet in my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a I'm not a meteorologist. So I guess I am. <laughs> Technically, yeah. when the is sun it, is about, you know, six inches. From yeah, yeah. So for me, summer is when it's hot and I live in Texas. So I, I guess it's a pretty big. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, a big it's already out in Texas. Right it's already out in Texas. <laughs> so, so, yeah, no, I uh, yeah, I, I think uh, either way, I think it'll be good. I think this kind of puts them in a high gear as far as like. Uh, a, a beta testing period goes an alpha testing period uh, i think they're gonna have to rush through a lot of that stuff i mean if it's early summer even if it's late summer it kind of uh, i think that stuff is gonna kind of be coming soon but we'll talk about that a little bit later yeah um i was gonna say you know like as far as waiting for classic we've already waited um what 13 months or almost 13 months yeah. now we've been very very patient and yeah. what we have in front of us like the next six or seven months right um we're gonna have an alpha very likely a beta time is gonna fly by we're gonna have a lot of updates a lot of news so we i think the brunt of the waiting and not knowing and what's gonna happen that's behind us i think the next yeah. six months is gonna fly by i think it's gonna be really yeah. fast i think it's gonna be really really fast um blizzard has a lot of traction with classic right now a lot of traction the, the media exposure and the excitement for it is at an all-time yeah well i mean just look at the demo like the demo was crazy um now there was obviously a lot of problems with the demo, and and again we'll 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 go into that a little bit more. But the excitement for the demo, people were hyped about it. People were having fun. Like streamers were willingly playing. Like it's it wasn't just like stream content for a lot of people. Like obviously like we're classic guys, we like classic more. But like I'm looking at some of these other streamers, and they're playing the level 19 demo off stream. <laughs> it's just like, and it, so it's it's not it's not just like us. It's like the, even the retail guys like. I know Bajira. Bajira was like, I can't stop playing this classic demo and I don't know what's wrong with me. It's basically like... Oh, I yeah. <laughs> almost, almost, almost two classic YouTube videos from a day at, at yeah. one point. Each video starts off, I can't. I just can't stop playing this. I'm going to keep playing this. I, it, it speaks volumes. Yeah. The comments are filled with the two. Like, oh man, I haven't seen you smile this hard playing WoW in a long time. Blah, 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 blah. I've even... Even that get shit on voice was coming out. Like the old classic Vegeta. <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's, like, he's like, get wrecked. Yes. You're like, whoa, I know that voice. I haven't heard that voice in years. Yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> it's funny. Hot. It's kind of like what I was talking about. Like, I, I get, like, my old, like, natural, like, I'm, I'm a troll. I play a rep paladin. Of course, I'm a troll. But, like, I, I'm... <laughs> My natural like trolley like mannerisms and characteristics just come out whenever I'm playing classic, and I like I was noticing that too. It's like it's like I'm being I'm being a kid again, um, which is uh, good and bad maybe. <laughs> nice. But uh, yeah, let, let, let's talk about a lot of the good stuff. Uh, a lot of the good stuff with the panel. Um, they came out and we actually I think we talked about this. We might have talked about this on Classic Cast before BlizzCon. But we thought that they would come out and, and really verify a lot of things that we already we already kind of assumed, right? Like, we, we thought there was not going to be flying. Like, we, we knew, right? There wasn't going to be flying. They had said there's not going to be achievements. Trans like, they, they've already come out and said this kind of stuff. Um, 
were you guys surprised by anything that they said in terms of like the good news or, or like was it exciting to you guys i don't know uh, definitely exciting I, I i i went in with zero expectations that was the thing is i really went in with zero expectations of any information or release dates so like everything to me was a surprise the release date was a shock like how much detail they were willing to give on like inner workings was mm-hmm. just as much of a surprise as the release date True. for me uh because they they divulged a lot you know like the real inner workings and i haven't seen stuff like that since like old school blitzcon panels on like youtube Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like the nitty gritty, like really talking technical details with fans, which is like normally a no go. Right. So well, and that I, I mean, and, re- and you're in that industry, like you you understand yeah. that you're working on your game right now, so like yeah. you usually you usually don't talk about anything with anybody. That sort of stuff, like unless unless you have something on the table to deliver, you won't even mention certain things, right? So like, if they're if they're discussing things, they have a ton all ready to go. It's just a matter of gauging personal opinion. They checked, they wanted to see how you guys react, how people reacted. I mean, that's what these are for. That mm-hmm. was, it was, I saw them sticking their, their toe on the water and just, you know, smiling back because they were getting a lot of good feedback. There's a lot of negative feedback too, but that feedback, it, it wasn't presented in a horrible way. Everybody was just asking their concerns and they gave you legitimate answers. Mm-hmm. Uh, rare from a multi billion dollar company nowadays and they're really listening. It was exciting. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I think the craziest thing obviously we got the panel but we also got to do that interview of course and just kind of the accessibility of the devs um just they answered a lot of questions um there's a lot of stuff that didn't get answered too but looking back on it now more objectively and less like what i wanted to see exactly they did actually go into a lot of stuff like i said crom gritty they answered like a lot of philosophy stuff they told us the subscription model they gave us the release time frame like they hit a lot like they hit a lot uh, in, in a very short period of time, like 45 minute panel, we had like a 20 minute Q and A with them. And I feel like I'm a lot more at peace and relaxed with the project than I was going to BlizzCon. Like I, I no longer have worries about whether or not they'll deliver the authentic vanilla experience. Now it's just a matter of, I'm just excited to play it. Oh yeah. Like my biggest takeaway from talking to them on several occasions, listening to the panels and playing the demo and getting feet, like everything, the entire BlizzCon experience, I guess, was the message that they tried to hammer home. And I really feel like they tried to hammer this home that they want to provide as and and uh, and as authentic vanilla wax experience as they possibly can. They don't want to change anything. They just want things to run well. And other than that, they want everything to be pretty much as vanilla wow as it possibly can be. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, another confirmation you guys got that was another company thing is that like every you guys did ask questions about certain changes you saw and the reaction or the response of if you're seeing something that's not supposed to be there, it's just something we most likely haven't gotten to yet. That was the most relieving answer mm-hmm. for me out of all of them was, oh, I noticed this is in the game. What's the deal with that? And the response was, oh, that's just something we haven't pulled out of that client yet. It's just things that are currently being replaced. Mm-hmm. Those, yeah. those, that, that's the stuff I take the hardest. Release dates, whatever, that's exciting. Saying we just haven't pulled that out yet means we're, it's painstaking and we're line by line of code pulling this out and replacing with old, older models, older textures, older... You well, know, yeah, that's important. That was important and, to hear. And it's great because, you know, for the last 11 months or so or 12 months now, people have been wanting updates and progress. You know, what what are they working on? What's your status on Classic WoW? And so they they gave us as much as they possibly, I mean, for, for, for God's sake, they gave us a play at home demo that we can give feedback on and see their actual progress. We can play, we can mm-hmm. t- tinker with it, we can fiddle with it, we can, we can, and, and you, you know they're taking that feedback and, and doing stuff with it. Like, yeah. you, you have to ask yourself the question, with this demo, are they trying to learn things from our experiences and take feedback, or are they not trying to learn things from our feedback? And and like, of course, they're. That's one of the goals of the demo. Um, I, I'm sure there's that big there's that big Reddit thread with like hundreds of lists, hundreds of items that are wrong with the demo. Um, mm-hmm. I'm sure they're taking all that and chipping away at it already. I'm positive of, of it. And, yeah. yeah. And shout out to everybody who contributed to that list. I guarantee no other company, no other game that's ever been tested was tested as thoroughly as as you guys tested it. Anybody that contributed to that thread discovered anything in the demo. You guys are the real MVPs, dude, straight up, honestly. Yeah, but yeah I mean, this that- this this should be the status quo for every game that comes out, a demo like this where they can get feedback. This is I mean, this is what they should have done with BFA. Like, yeah, it is, they should it have is. done this with BFA. They should have done this they should do this with every game, I think. One one of the big yeah. problems uh, I think is whenever 
whenever a game goes into beta testing or any sort of testing period, right? Because the demo, in a sense, was a testing period. It wasn't. It was, but it wasn't, right? It was like a. It was basically like a progress update. Again, that's something we've talked about before. But um, it was it was a progress update. But in a sense, for us as the player base, like that was the testing period for us. That was a, a chance for us to say, like, okay, like what's going on with the game, and let's see where you guys are, um, and to give feedback on that and. At least as far as like any sort of interaction or, or any sort of information that we got a chance to, to get from the devs or uh, really anybody from Blizzard is they said that like they're they're actively looking at feedback. And I mean, like so whenever whenever I was streaming, right, whenever I was streaming, I got off my stream, I went, and I, I walked over to a couple of Blizzard employees and I, and I told them like, hey, like, have you guys seen all the concerns about sharding? Like, what like what's the deal with this? This is something that, you know, a, a lot of people, including myself, don't, like don't really like this. We, we don't think this is something that's good for the game. And they said, yeah, like, actually, we've been following up on it. Like, we've been, you know, we, we've been right on it. And we know, we know people are concerned. And, uh, like, we're, like, the, the sharding idea was something specific to the demo. Because they said, they said that basically if you take the entire population of the server and you put them all in Westfall and all in the Barrens, then they thought sharding was just the best, the, the best option for being able to, like, fix that. Uh, and, and to at least get people to be able to play the demo, especially given that it in initially was going to have a time limit. So that's why they did sharding there. But they said sharding was not the, the final answer. Like they're still actively looking for uh, a better solution for the actual game. Uh, the launch of the actual game is is uh, specifically what they said. So like that's I don't know. I don't know what that means. You know, they might have just been talking, but who knows? Yeah, right now it sounds like the sharding is something that they're considering for specifically the launch period of classic wow i am not really for that i mean there are a couple events that can happen in classic wow that are as stressful as a launch event mm -hmm. in my opinion i mean it's like world bosses for example or the first the, obviously the first thing is the is the on garage thing right, right. Uh, yeah. opening of the gates so i i think there could be a slippery slope with that so i would prefer them not to use it at all um but honestly i don't i don't think they will i don't think they want to i think well, they're trying to find a way around it i don't think that they want to i yeah i don't think that they want to either and those are the things that come up that, that those are kind of the arguments that come up whenever it's like, well, what, what about this? Like if they're sharding this, that's going to kind of suck. Right. Uh, and that's true. I think that's hundred percent true. I don't think they can. It's not just like it, it, it would kind of suck for us as an experience. Cause like we want to see everybody there and it'll be fun. It'll be exciting. But if you have sharding at the AK40 event, if you have sharding at the world bosses, well, like it doesn't work because then all of a sudden you have multiple world bosses spawn. You have multiple gongs, gongs to ring. Like I, 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 like that's what everybody talks about. But like, if they decide to do that, then it's like it. That's it's stupid. You know what I mean? So yeah. hopefully, hopefully, like not just from like a experience standpoint, but from like a like design standpoint, they don't do that. It's twofold, you know. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's kind of that's kind of how I feel about that. Tips, Chrome. Do you guys have anything? No, I agree. I agree. I, I saw I saw in the demo people kind of using it as an. A, in an abusive way, you know, sharding into where a rare mob was to get a piece of loot, you know, and just kept doing it over and over again. Even at low levels, it could change things. It could change the economy. It could change anything. You know, you can go, to, you find the same rare boss six times and it's like, oh, it's only the starting zone. Well, I mean, it's pretty early on. Everybody's going to want these things. You're, you're the first person to get five blue items and throw them on the auction house. You're going to be rolling pretty fat. Yeah. You didn't have to work for it except have your friend on, you know, shard A, B, and C invite you as soon as they found the mob, right? So, right. Yeah. I, don't, I don't like it in any sense. I mean, you know, I get the I, I, I can understand why they do it, blah, 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 blah. But uh, they really don't need to. I mean, as we've said before, part of the classic experience was waiting for that mob to spawn for, you know, 20, 30 minutes. You know, if you're not if you're not nice enough to invite somebody into a group, you know, to kill Samuel Phipps in the beginning of the undead zone. Like if you're not there to like, in, you know, standing in line like everybody else, you know, just wait and get over it. That's your experience. It's not going to be like that forever. Like everybody's worried about being stuck in a starting zone and worried about it taking forever. Everybody waits there. Everybody takes that moment. You get you, you go out, you can go explore, grind to level up, do anything, make a new friend, do something else besides like, Oh, I can't play unless I, you know, unless I get my mob straight away. If that's your attitude, you're never going to survive classic wow in the long run. Yeah. It's not going to matter anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. it's, all, it's all a grind in the waiting game. Either like suck it up and deal mm -hmm. with the classic experience or you're never going to enjoy the actual classic experience. Cause you can take sharding mm -hmm. away a month from a month later or once you get to like level 10 to have it like it so it's deactivated or however whatever system they want to work on but um mm -hmm. 
it, the, the experience to get the, that negative experience they were trying to avoid with sharding is going to hit them again you know yeah Everyone's it's, it's going to happen again zone. eventually yeah. you're like oh all these people are going to rush like those those 10 people who are going to try hard yeah they're going to blow past you you're never going to see them they'll they'll hit 60 before you that's not the guy you worry about it's the other 1500 people in your area all moving to the next zone with you it's going to keep happening right there are escort quests there's a million things you can't shard that shit out like you're gonna have to wait you mm -hmm. know it, it was those moments that made you make friends at level one why'd you make a friend at level five well it was either group up with this guy or wait four hours yeah exactly that mm -hmm. classic experience you take that experience away like i know it sounds silly to some but i like making that level five friend i like meeting that guy and getting in a group with him change that experience and the essence of classic yeah. from the beginning to the end you can't do it for sure I agree, hundred percent. Well, very well said. I, I think uh, I, I think another thing, and this is something that like I, I started playing WoW week one, right? I started playing six days after launch, uh, but I didn't play on launch day, so I don't have the like retail vanilla WoW launch day experience um, to really call back on. I, I know even six days later, like I have a bunch of one day credits on my account because like the servers kept going down. Um, but at least on like how, how private servers went, right? And and I, I do think the private server experience and the classic experience are two different things. Um, sure. Just like the meta is different because of different changes that they make on private servers. But um, that's something that I, I, I really wish I did. That's like one of the, whenever I think on like things that I really wish that I could call back to as having a real experience of, I, I don't, right? Because I remember whenever I started playing like a week after launch or six days after launch, um, I didn't have, like, I don't remember it being that bad. I really don't remember it being that bad, but maybe launch day was crazy. I know launch day on, on private servers is crazy. Um, launch day is crazy anywhere. I mean, yeah. it's from private servers, you get a million people log into the, you know, on, on retail version. Of course, it's going to be crazy, but that's the essence of the experience. You can't, like, every game, mm -hmm. multi-billion dollar company or an indie company on launch, if there's some traction behind their game, has troubles. You can't avoid, there's not enough money, you, it's not... You could be, you could have a billion dollar machine. It's going to get overworked. It's not like they have money. Something to is going to happen. Technology. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, you know, we're billionaires. Why don't we just invent a new machine to run the server on? This one won't crash. If they had that, like they would, they'd be pioneering the industry in every way. They're, they're using everything. They're using what's at, at, at their hands. Like I, we have our own server technology for our game. That's the same thing. You load, you open up the server for 30 more players on a 60 player server. Suddenly that server's crashing hard. You're like, oh, what the hell are we doing wrong? What do we have to upgrade? Like even if even a million dollars, we'll still have those crashes. Doesn't yeah. matter how big you are. So right. They're not going to supplement it with with sharding. They had sharding on on BFA launch. My server was down for three days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. it was, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> what were you? What, what server were you playing on again? Tychondria. That's what I thought. Both both, both of them. them. Both of the horde servers, the number one horde servers in the world, they were down. You couldn't play. That's crazy. I I, I, I paid character transferred over to. Kelthuzad just because I knew I had some streamer privileges and that, that stuff was back up first day. Yeah, okay. <laughs> my, my, my other characters at Area 50 to see it in chat. Area 52 was down to there was like four, mm -hmm. four the four horde servers. No dice. No and dice, and no they considered they considered BFA a pretty good launch compared to like the other <laughs> expansions too which is funny. You know. Yeah. Uh, it's like, I mean, still, it is. Uh, it, was, it was a good launch in comparison. You look at their other launches it was a good launch. It just it proves that even a good launch is riddled with with problems you can't avoid. You, you Blizzard has proven time and time again you can never guess the the amount of people that are going to rush your servers. You never you can never truly gauge the interest in your game because not everybody's on Twitter. Not everybody cares about Twitch. Not everybody cares about YouTube. But they're still current in the news. They still read things in gaming magazines. Like there's a whole other demographic of millions of people who don't even aren't even plugged into this world that'll that'll jump into the game and Blizzard's going to go holy crap I had no idea. Same thing that happened to him when they released the demo on the BlizzCon ticket. How many more tickets just sold? Mm -hmm. If people were interested, you know, you can give people got people gave people a hard time. I can't believe you're spending fifty bucks for this. Doesn't matter. It's fifty bucks and an opportunity to make sure the thing you love works right. People did that, no shame, whatever. But Blizzard didn't expect that. Mm -hmm. Like that that demo that demo extension came from a massive jolt in numbers, as well as a peak in interest on social media. People mm -hmm. saw it. And Blizzard said, "Oh my god." We have to we have to extend this. We didn't think people were going to keep buying the ticket once it was over. Yeah, yeah, it's true. That is true. I think uh, so. When it comes to when it comes to sharding, I mean, they're they're definitely they've got to find a they've got to find a solution, right? Whether that solution is just like let it roll, see what happens, and just you have a certain population cap and there's a queue or whatever. Uh, dynamic response is another thing. 
I was talking to I was talking to Nano actually I was talking to Nano from Nostalrius and this is actually going on my stream we were doing it live and he was saying that he thinks dynamic response is actually something that's it, it could be worse even because uh, how people take advantage of dynamic response I think it is I think it is. I, I, I agree with him. I think yeah. in, in some ways it could be worse. In other ways, it's and, and, like it's, it's a give and take, right? In other ways, it is better. But uh, in, in some ways, it's worse, right? And it's like you have people playing the game uh, in a way that wasn't necessarily intended, which I think is fine, right? You can't pigeonhole. It's an RPG, right? And I think in an RPG, you shouldn't necessarily pigeonhole players into playing the game a certain way. But uh, at the same time, and by the way, I think that's one of the big problems with Retail Wire right now. But uh, at the same time, when you're playing the game in a certain way and it ends up being in an, uh, it kind of, kind of, it's, it's like exploitable, right? Where people yeah, are like, leveling up to level 60 in like three and a half days, you know, play time, which is like, I think Joanna's record was like four days, like four and a half days or something back in four Vanilla. days, 20 hours, yeah. four days, 20 hours world record. There you go. People, people you shouldn't be, be able, but, yeah, I was just going to say, you shouldn't be able to get to 60 uh, literally by killing six different mobs like that's yeah. it and you just grind up a few levels in a spot and then you move on yeah that's like like for those that were there on june 23rd with me like you know what i'm talking about like it terrible it's terrible it's terrible like it, it takes away from the world of warcraft right it's like you said yeah. it's, the game's not meant to be played that way mm -hmm. my, my starting zone experience with a with a with dynamic respawns was terrible i created it was my fifth or no my sixth rogue i was gonna level i wanted to get to 60 i think i got the 40 before i gave up on the entire experience but my first my one to ten experience was i went in from the undead starting zone went down into the neighborhood of the town in, in the main town first mobs you fight the the, the rotting zombies they're just sitting there the mindless ones mm -hmm. and i stood in the house and i fought the same mob for an hour and grinded out four of those levels went and turned in the quest which was done a while ago and then there was a qu the quest to go collect the boxes in town, and I just stood next to the same box. Even the boxes were dynamically spawning. Everything was just spawning. Yeah. I didn't have to leave that house. I accomplished three quests in one spot without ev not ever moving. Mm -hmm. um, that ruined it for me. It really did ruin it for me. You know, like nobody was waiting in line for the Samuel quest. Nobody was waiting in line for the commander over by the you know the the Scarlet commander that's over at the like the final quest before you leave the zone. Like no one had to go into the spider cave and fight the spiders. Yep. They just stood there at the entrance shooting the one red spider that kept respawning over and over again. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, I'm gonna it, I'm gonna be honest. Like I I didn't play under those circumstances, but to me that sounds like less true that to the core of vanilla gameplay experience than than having a little bit of sharding. Obviously, I don't want either. Like I think there's probably a third solution, but what you just described seems less true to vanilla WoW than sharding does. Yeah, I think. Uh... Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's just so hard to say. Yeah, like it's both like both of those things are, uh, like there's pros and cons to both of them, and I mean they, this is a decision they've got to make. Uh, another option is like stuff that other people have said. I'm not I'm not a fan of server merges. I'm not like I I know a lot of people say like well what if they like they release all the servers and they merge the servers. It's like server merging is not good for the community or server either. I mean we can look at the past like. Uh, I mean, let's let's just like real talk for a second, right? It's it's not BS, but like look at um, there were a lot of people who, whenever uh, like Zethcore merged into Lightbringer, it was just one of those things. It was like a lot of people from Zethcore just kind of felt like, yeah, I mean, this kind of killed our community too. But it's like they they felt like they had to do it for the life of the server, and I don't know, uh, I I. I think merges aren't something that's particularly good for me. Like I, I think losing your character's name, you lose guild names and people have to go like reconnect and refind each other. And it, it, it just ends up being another problem. Uh, I think well, what, what you'd have around. to do, what you'd have to do is a shared guild name or a shared character name database, like amongst the connected servers, right. To prevent yeah. that problem. And you have like, I mean, that, that was one <laughs> solution that came up where it was like, uh, I don't know. Illidan one two three and I guess talking about that and those are the three servers and then all of a sudden you're put together uh, after like however much time I don't know like I mean I, I think there's pros and cons I think there's pros and cons to every solution um, another solution and this is something so whenever we had that interview kind of we were sitting in on the press conference interview session with uh, John Height and Brian Birmingham he said that you could dynamically change you could easily just dynamically change the server population cap 
and they could dial it down and dial it up. Like you could have a smaller population cap for the servers at launch and then increase yep. the population cap as time goes on, as people filter out of the starting zone. Uh, well, he yep. didn't say that. He didn't say that directly, I don't think, but that's immediately what I thought of whenever he said that you could dynamically change it. Um, yep. Yeah, I don't think he, I don't think he exactly said that, but um, that's that's just what what triggered in my head. No, so yeah, just to clarify, we asked him in in Vanilla WoW what was the population cap and what do you want the population cap to be for Class WoW, and he said so it doesn't work exactly like that. Mm -hmm. um, population caps can actually be dynamic and change depending on what the necessary on what on what is required of them. Um, so yeah, exactly right. I mean, that's that's seems like a pretty good solution to me. Of course, there are shortcomings, but I think it's better than sharding or dynamic respawns. Where you know on launch day, when people are shoved into six zones, you might have a two or two and a half thousand population cap, and then you know 24 hours later, once people have kind of spread out a bit, you bump it up to three thousand or three and a half thousand, whatever whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? Just random number. Um, that seems like a pretty reasonable solution to me. Mm -hmm. That's it. Is it's definitely reasonable as far as far as like releasing servers for a game. That's that's honestly like that's the basic template for releasing servers you release a server with a certain amount of population you test the infrastructure see where people are at you get tons of data like blizzard has said like verbatim we track every single individual detail to every keystroke you make we know everything you're doing how many times you push that button to spam that attack how many times you've opened the door how many times you've eaten a certain type of food like they literally track every detail so they're going to be able to track all these details and find out how like how rough it is for the community i think you, the solution you guys keep saying is the best one have a have a cap on the population so people spread out it won't take long for people to get out of the starting zone it really won't like it won't take long at all it's the only servers that are going to have trouble are massive streamer servers that are being flooded constantly with new players you know once mm. once once big streamer a and b say this is a server i'm on those are the ones that will be suffering the most put a limit on the cap people work their way through it then increase the population no sharding no dynamic respawns won't ruin the essence of classic and then as far as as far as like a, a server that dies later, um, Blizzard could stick the old tried and true free character transfers off a dead server and then overpopulated servers, free character transfers over to a, a less populated server, you know, because that's going to happen. Think about how many people are going to join your guys server when they find out you're on and then they're going to get frustrated. And they're going to want to move somewhere, right? Their character's already level 40. Blizzard could offer them a free transfer to a low, a different realm. Suddenly more realms are getting populated like that tried and true system they have in place for a reason. They may talk about trying to make differences and stuff like, oh, we want to change it. We want to change that experience. But that system's tried and true for a reason. I think it's the best solution. Server merging like, kills you. You don't want to lose your, your names, like you said. That's too much infrastructure. To even, to even have, say, like two of the same name on a server, like the, the back end log work for that to make it so you can both have the same name and then interact with each other without like accidentally talking to the wrong person or separating your, like that sounds horrible. And I don't think Blizzard would ever do that. Who would yeah, dedicate the resources to that? You know what I mean? And it's like you said, that's tried and true. There's there's actually precedent going back to early 2005 of them doing that and allowing that. And I think I think it was probably a pretty good solution and a good workaround to just... Uh, oh, they, they were making new servers all through Vanilla WoW, right? Was, so yeah. they make a new server and offer... Um, who do you, do you think they'll have to do that with Classic WoW? They'll be making yeah. new servers as Maybe. Classic WoW goes on? 100%. That's a possibility. If, if Hype just picks up and continues on, very uh, definitely a possibility. But yeah, so they were allowing server transfers from high pop servers to low pop servers. Not You couldn't transfer from a low pop server to a high pop server, but you could go high pop to low pop. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I, I think on that topic, where like the, the potential of creating new servers as time goes on, if you look at the WoW like subscription chart, it's it, it starts out like this, or I guess like this, and goes, and it keeps going up. It keeps going up until Wrath, it kind of levels out, and then it starts to dip a little bit. Uh, and then it goes to, to whatever we're at now eventually. Um, I think that, and when we've talked about this before, there's a, there's a hot chance that it's like, boom, real high spike, and then it starts dwindling pretty fast. Like, it spike, tank, and then it kind of starts to dwindle, and then it'll eventually maybe pick back up. Uh, if it follows that trend, I don't think they'll make new servers. But if it grows, if it goes like this, and it goes like that. Who knows? Like, I mean, I mean that, that that's something that's a lot more realistic for them to create more servers. Um, yeah. Bear in mind, OSRS just reached their concurrent player uh, record. Of a seventeen-year-old game just hit its concurrent player record. I'm really? not saying obviously there's uh, there's differences, right? OSRS has additional content, but hey, you know who knows? I, who knows? Mm -hmm. well, it's the it's the it's the age of bringing back your old game lord of the rings online just did the same thing they released their legendary servers which is a throwback to all the original content 
they're yeah. releasing it progressively. There are changes. Like there are a lot of changes some people weren't happy about, but I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, that's the thing. Nobody wants changes. Everyone's it's literally the same rhetoric over on the Lord of the Rings online website as it is over on the Blizzard website. It's people didn't want changes, didn't want this, didn't want that. But most like they, they did put in a lot of like quality of life changes for Lord of the Rings are different. I won't even get into that subject, but mm -hmm. their population is increased. Like people, you have to have a paid subscription to play the new classic server on Lord of the Rings. They made it so you could play Lord of the Rings free. You want to try out this one once in a lifetime rehash of old content, you must buy a paid subscription. And their subscriptions are jumping up. I'm seeing a lot of big streamers playing it. It's getting tons of traction. Even though it's not huge on the viewer list of Twitch, people are playing it. My Discord's full of messages. Come play this, come play this till Classic comes out. Everybody's so excited yeah. to play old school Lord of the Rings. It's yeah. it's all there. It's it's pretty beautiful. Yeah. No, nobody's playing their their new content. No one cares about. It. They have two other expansions. People have stopped buying because they just realized <laughs> I don't have to anymore. When is the <laughs> oh, industry well, gonna wake up and just realize the old tried and true traditional MMORPG model is the way to go? I, yeah, I, I just it happening. boggles my mind that they still don't get it. Like so many of the even indie devs. Like I see a lot of indie devs working on MMOs. I see a lot of these AAA companies pumping out MMOs. Like nobody gets it. Like they keep trying to reinvent a wheel that that just is flawless you know mm -hmm. to begin with it drives me insane i'm gonna be honest and this is like probably uh and it, it's it's bitter it's a bitter pill to take but i think this is probably very true and it's uncomfortable for people like us but i think probably wow and a lot of games these days with these new microtransactions like in-game shops i bet they're making more money than ever even though there are maybe yeah. fewer concurrent players fewer active subscribers i bet they're making more money than ever i think our demographic of sort of like old school hardcore gamer kind of people mm -hmm. I think we are not the primary demographic worth targeting. I think there's less money from targeting us than there are the new age people. And I think that's, I mean, I, I don't think they do anything by accident. Okay. Yeah. Like I think that they are just targeting a different demographic. And now I think they're trying to target us retroactively as well with the old game that they know that we love. I think they're trying to do both at the same time. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's, there are a lot of younger people though that are, that are interested in classic. Wow. And, uh, games like this because it's like well all these old people all these, all these old people these 25 year old just decrepit just withering away people are are saying Salty that <laughs> yeah uh, all these all these so people are saying 25 is old <laughs> oh. no <laughs> but i i think there's there, you know there, there are there's a younger demographic that's interested in playing these games too but um i, I just and i said this after the classic announcement i said that i i really really do think this we might be kind of like on the cusp of a renaissance uh, in gaming and people are going to start realizing. I mean, look, like you said, Lord of the Rings Classic just came out or whatever. Uh, Lord of the Rings Online Classic. Mm. The, I think developers are going to start being like, okay, what is going on? Why, like, 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 what, like why, why do people like this? Like, we made this like 15 years ago. We made this however many years ago. Why are people still playing it? Why do people want it so bad? And I, I think they need to take a long, hard look at a lot of the design principles. And sure, it might have been an accident. Like, we, we were talking to Kevin, and we were talking to John and Mark, and uh, there was a lot of things that were calculated, but there were some things that just kind of, hey, let's just throw it in there, see what happens. And it ended up being <laughs> yeah. good. Uh, it ended up being good. And, and I think stuff like that is what, what you have to go back, and you have to study it. And um, I mean, I, it's, it's not going to be an easy job, but I, I think no. people do have opportunities to make uh really good really well designed games for an audience of people that are just there waiting there, there's an audience yeah. of people out there waiting uh to to play these games i mean uh, like i, I mean I, I i looked at my demographics on youtube the other day like 80 percent of my channel <laughs> is people i think man i think it's people over the age 18 is 80 percent of my channel and and the majority is like 25 to 34 or something like that but um i you know there there's still a population there of younger people but there, there's a big population of older people that just they want to play classic. They want to play these older type of games. Uh, I mean, you look at Brian Birmingham, uh, the the guy who's going to be the the lead for classic. He went on stage and he said, "I love retro gaming," and I think somebody that says they love retro gaming, I think that's a good thing for the game for the development of the game. I, I really like the team. Uh, at least everybody that we met so far, because we met Brian, we met uh, Omar. Uh, and then John's involved because he's the executive producer of WoW, and then Ian's involved, of course. I mean, he's he's a hardcore guy, and, and Nano told us how supportive he was. Um, yeah, everybody's saying how old they are. Yeah, we're we're all we're we're all withering away, guys. It's not good. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I I definitely think you're you're right. I think that with modern game design, 
like it has pushed this demographic of players like i would consider us to be a part of it this sort of retro gamer demographic um, or, or not retro gamer but people that like the old school game design of the early 2000s or maybe late 90s it's pushed them so far that people like us have just com become completely uh disinterested in in modern games and i think that the demographic our demographic is big enough that they have realized okay they're not happy with the current game design we should sort of re-release or like you said a renaissance maybe just make new games of of similar design i think you're probably right Mm -hmm. Well, it's happening. It's happening in the industry. When you say like, I hope developers are listening. Like one of the things we talk about in our meetings all the time is that like, I've said this to you guys before. Every developer I know has Blizzard's success like under a microscope. We're watching Classic WoW like a hawk. Everybody's watching Classic WoW right now, mm -hmm. uh, specifically because the success of Classic WoW like determines a massive does determine a massive shift in the industry. If Classic WoW is a success, it'll show that like a game without microtransactions, a game without like cell phone features. Mm -hmm can be as successful as a game that pulls in billions of dollars from only having a one button click to buy something, right? Mm -hmm. Like for the free to play game success does not does not come from, you know, massive exposure, right? Like Ninja didn't make billions of dollars for Fortnite, right? Fortnite made billions of dollars for themselves mm -hmm. and picked and picked people to help promote that stuff. But they wouldn't have been able to get a quarter of what they got if it wasn't for the microtransaction sales and stuff like that. The free to play model is 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 it's a hard to beat model. But yeah, it's um, very popular right now. Every gaming company is interested in reeling back their old players, right? There's millions of people from the ages, ages, you know, 18 to 40 that are still playing games, right? Millions of people. And to like cut to cut that demographic out, to cut the demographic that played Classic WoW out and say like, oh, they're, they're a dying breed. No one cares about this anymore. That's so wrong. I think what I've learned in the gaming industry and what other developers are learning in the gaming industry is that like, if we continue to treat our customers like idiots, and and treat them as if they don't want a challenge we're going to keep losing them mm -hmm. right it just like, feels empty it's an empty gaming it, experience it is an empty gaming experience most games i've played I, I get an opportunity in my position to try out a lot of games i get a lot of game like new new small indie developers that come to me and want me to publish their game and they're like here come test my game out and i'll sit there and i'll play their game and i'll and I'll, i can tell them if it's hollow if it's just easy i can tell what their their true agenda is within the first five minutes of picking up a controller or sitting on my keyboard and playing their game all of them are like that. And then you get some of these newer, like, indie developers. Like, you ever notice, like, the award-winning games are always, like, these weird, small indie games that are insanely challenging? They're like, oh, game of the year, game of the year. Some random Xbox game that was on the marketplace. Wasn't even a PC game. Just went on the radar, but somehow got game of the year four times in a row on Xbox Live. Like, what does that, what does that say to you? you know, mm. Why is this hard? Why is this hard platformer game? You know, why was Cuphead so popular? Why was these, like, random old-school games popular? Because... There is a demographic of millions of people out there that are willing to throw money at a game that will consume their time. Mm -hmm. Nobody, nobody wants to play a game for five minutes and then hit a paywall and say, oh, "I don't want to. I don't, I don't know what to do anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to play this anymore." You know, mm -hmm. free to play games. How how long do they keep your interest? You know, Path of Exile, so great. We're like, "Oh, Path of Exile." How many of you are playing it right now? None of you. Yeah, like, they're watching Classic Cast. They're watching Classic Cast. <laughs> 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 um, you know, but but their game has a massive following. Why did everybody go from Diablo to them? Forget the announcement and the goofy controversy and stuff like that. It is a challenging game. It's fun to play. But they also have a free to play model. They have kind of like the best of both worlds, right? And then they just announced with their new expansion, we're going to make our game more difficult, and we're removing all of these horrible Diablo type features. These are these these pay to win features. We're removing that, and we're just going to have you play the game hardcore. Right. People are flipping out. You know? Yeah, and they, people they, people they, are people are going to or POE is going to get a big uh, big audience of people. Uh, black playing it probably from that they could people respond very positively to companies treating them as human beings and they might not respond like i'm never going to spend i'm never going to pay for microtransactions like in classic wow or, or like it's just we're not like that right we come from a different generation where that was actually like deemed to be like pretty weird right i believe me i bought a wow token just like anybody else but um this the idea of spending money on on the in-game shop was always controversial from the celestial steed till now and we still view it that way and and while we might not respond in terms of purchasing you know things from the store i'll tell you how we'll respond if you if a developer makes good games challenging games without a pay a, a cash shop i'll buy their next game like holy like yeah. look at rockstar there's a reason why rockstar sells every single game like through the roof because they treat their audience well. They make great games. Bioware, once upon a time, not anymore, but once upon a time, same thing. Anything that Bioware would make, I would buy, and a lot of people would buy. There are certain companies that just do things right, 
And while they might not, you know, make up for it in the short term with this like short term, you know, micro transaction pump and dub scheme, they make up for it in the long term. Like there, there's never going to be a rock star game. I don't buy, you know? Yeah. But I also think like on the topic of micro transactions, I, I think it really depends on the game and, and the model in general. Right. So if you look at a game like League of Legends, like I don't know if I've. I don't, I don't know if I've done a WoW like microtransaction. I maybe have done like a server. I don't know if I actually did a server transfer or anything like that. I probably have at some point, like an alt or whatever. But um, but a game like League of Legends, like I've bought skins for League of Legends before, right? I was like, well, this game is free to play. I mean, I'll buy a skin, whatever. I like doing that. Like to, I like to flex on people with my kale. But uh, I suck now. So, <laughs> so it's, not, it's not quite the same. But... Um, but yeah, no, I, I think uh, it just kind of depends on the game and, and what's going on, right? Uh, I do think well, the, that the, for, the, for the genre, yeah, go ahead and go ahead. I was going to say, one of the big differences with League of Legends is one, there's like, there's not that MMO immersion, right? Yeah, so exactly. This is where I was going to go. The stuff yeah. doesn't stand out as much. Two, with League of Legends, you can actually grind in game currency and just buy it legitimately through in game currency for the champions, rather than. Right. Right, for, not for skins though. Not for skins, yeah. Not for skins. Okay, okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I, I, th I think that immersion thing is a big is a big differential. Yeah, it's yeah. not like a, it's not like a pay to win thing, because uh, it's just like it's just cosmetic stuff. But it, like yeah. again, like it's it's different. It's, it depends on the genre of the game and how things are presented. Um, yeah. Well, pay pay to win. No, not pay to win features, but like it, it, whether it's whether it's a cosmetic thing or like even let's go to like Blizzard stuff back to Blizzard, like Transmog and other things like that. Like all of these systems, even though they, they do generate interest, what it shows is that Blizzard's either like is one not confident enough in their content uh, that it's going to keep, keep keep people interested that they just keep adding all these little things. Like Blizzard is a is a is a massive open world mobile game right now. BFA is like a mobile game, right? There's you can you can go farm if you want to by yourself. You can so you can do all these little things by yourself. You don't need anybody. Like Warlords of Draenor was a perfect example of that. That was Farmville Simulator, right? That's what you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. It was a Farmville Simulator. What Blizzard did is they showed that they have zero confidence in their lore. They had zero confidence in their product. They couldn't stand up on its own. So like, here you guys can be by yourself. Here's your single player experience. We cannot figure out how to to do this again. We can't figure out how to do this again. Here's a, here's a whole list of random shit you don't need. Uh, we can't figure out how to make our dungeons viable again and the gear viable again. Here's Transmog. You know, wear whatever you want. Our artists aren't confident in their in their in their sets. Just transmog whatever you want. Don't, we're not even going to put effort in our sets. Mm -hmm. all, all plate wearers, same set. All cloth wearers, same set. Just different colors. There you go. That's that's lack of confidence. That's that's they're not they're not delivering. Uh, when they have no incentive to anymore because the rest of the community says, oh well, you know, I'll just transmog my favorite tier two set. Screw it, I don't care. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, classic. Wow is going to give them a reason to rethink all of those systems. You know, mm -hmm. like 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 Stay Safe said, it's th that immersion. Um, Classic WoW was so good that you don't need any of that extra stuff to enjoy it. You don't need any of that extra stuff. Burning Crusade was the same way. You didn't need Transmog to enjoy the, the game. The next set was going to look. Yeah, yeah. The, you knew the content was going to be good. You knew the gear was going to be badass. Yeah, some people still preferred it, but like you, you give people the option, and, and they're just going to they're just going to go to that other option. Not going to try hard anymore. Mm. But yeah, I, I I think a big portion of people that are still keeping BFA and retail WoW float are collectionists. I mean, there's a reason they've added the Mount tab, the Pet Journal, the Toy Box, the Heirloom tab, the What's appearance tab, game? achievements. People, I I really genuinely think the majority of people playing BFA don't raid. They they very rarely do dungeons. I think they're just farming old content for appearances and mounts and transmog and pets. Like I really I really think that because they've catered to those people so much mm -hmm. yeah. with all these with all these with all this different functionality. Yeah. yeah. Um, wow, and, and, wow, archaeology adventure. Yeah. And, and just to clarify real quick, I guess uh, I, I didn't know this because I, I haven't really actively been playing League of Legends recently, but supposedly you can make you can get skins from the points. You get like you can you can get points in game currency and then and then you can like get skins through that, like random random skins and loot boxes and stuff through the in game currency. Yeah, so yeah, that's the go. formula. Yeah, that's so that's formula. something that does exist too. Uh, I, I didn't know that. Um But yeah, I think um you know, we, we've talked about sharding quite a bit. Uh, we've talked about the demo a little bit. Just to kind of go in on the demo, you know, th there was like that big long thread. And, and you know, we're, we're hoping that Blizzard looks at a lot of stuff like that, looks at kind of the, the resources that are available to them. Uh, and by resources, I, I mean really the community, right? Use the community as a resource. And I, I get the feeling that they're doing that. Uh, they say they're doing that. So at least like all, all signs point to them doing that, I guess. But um, it'd be stupid if they didn't. It's it's so much free data. They had cool. people pay fifty dollars to become free testers. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, In a sense, yeah. That's a, 
<laughs> like there's so much there's so much data lying around to not use it would be would be ludicrous they have enough they have they have data that'll help them figure out their next move for servers population everything like just from that small bit uh, the events the events also showed them like whether how detrimental sharding can be there's there was enough data to like they could walk away from this and have everything they need to launch an alpha just from the data test from the demo. oh yeah and I remember when the when the when the demo first came out, like people's initial reaction was they've been working on Classic WoW for a year or over a year now, and this is all they have to show for it. Like this is it with all these bugs and, and discrepancies. I th I really think a big like the biggest hurdle they've had to overcome is just getting this game up and running, like, like structurally, mm -hmm. um, getting the game to run. I th I think you know changing regen rates, changing auto attack distance, changing you know, whatever, whatever. I think that stuff is going to be just, they can just power that stuff out really fast now that the game is actually functional and can be played. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, that, that's that's the impression I got as well. Um, there, now, there's a lot of problems, right? There's a lot of problems. Like, I know one thing, spell crits were doing double damage in the demo, and they're supposed to do, uh, they're not supposed to do 200%, they're supposed to do 150% in Classic. Um, yeah. Just like, just little stuff like that, uh, an ability not working quite the right way. Uh, I was noticing, right. like, little, like, they just, just it, they seem minor, but like, okay, for example, if you're in your attack animation in classic, if you jump, your character is static and he moves like this, right? Like it's just like, ch -ch -ch, right? Or no, he's doing this. But if you're in your attack animation, uh, in in the retail version of the game, your character kind of swings, right? Instead of just like you're you're 100 behind your camera. I don't I don't know if I'm if I'm doing a good job of explaining this, but if you jumped and turned while attacking, which is something that a lot of melee players often do whenever they're trying to kite stuff back then you notice this little thing and, and stuff like that sticks out. Um, that's the kind of stuff I, I hope they really go back and fix. And they talked about like how, how just meticulously they were working on the lighting in the game. And, and that's another thing a lot of people noticed in the character selection screen, the shading looked a little bit off. And it's funny how often it's, it's funny how, uh, not how often, but how uh, something so small is something that actually ends up being so noticeable and, uh, they said they were working on stuff like that, so hopefully we can. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, guys. My my explanation maybe wasn't very good there, but uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So that's that's one of the things that I want. I hope to see the fixed. Yeah. Well, the way I see it is like they have a template laid out now, and you can see like how. I mean, it, there was some blurring issues and things like that, but like you could look at it. Look at it from. I mean, I know not everybody's a developer. Not everybody stares at lines of code. Not everybody knows like this infrastructure. But like Blizzard said, it wasn't a matter of just like plugging in the old code from that Nostalrius gave them, shoving it into the new system and be like, there you go, enjoy and play it, which is like, I think the mentality most people have is that that's all Blizzard had to do, which is take this, plug it into their system, like and flip a switch and like, there you go, boys, right where Nostalrius left off. Woo! Like mm -hmm. it wasn't that simple. It's, 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 they said, we're going to recreate it in our, our system. We're going to go to our current system and slowly piece by piece, add in all the old classic stuff, add in the old world add in the old grass, which is why they even said there are certain grass textures popping up you, that won't be there when Classic is launched. Don't worry about that. Like, oh, that lighting that you're seeing there, that's not going to be there at launch. Don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of actually not worrying about it. That's the problem is the community stuff. They, they <laughs> got their porches and their pitchforks. And they're like, oh, I'm fucking worried about it. You're like, well, we told you like, I'm still worried. Like, until it's gone, I'm going to freak out, man. Uh, and the forums are filled with people not listening to anything. <laughs> Devs are saying like, oh, we got this covered. Like, no, 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 until I see it. So it, there's a lot of uh, I'll believe it when I see it type of people out there that are making making waves for people. Yeah. But like I, I, I saw things in there. I was like, oh, that's a simple thing. Like I, when I develop video games and like like I could tell you every day, like, OK, we're working on an open world Western game. And every day someone's like, I made a new cacti. It's like, OK, well, what do you what do you got? It's like, oh, I made a new model for our saguaro cactus. It's like, oh, well, great. Now I got to go through and replace every freaking saguaro cactus because this one looks better. <laughs> Right. And, right. and then, it, then, it, then, it, then, it, then it's me going through a massive map, you know, like it, some of it's just laid out. Like we mm -hmm. have terrain editors and generators now. Right. Mm -hmm. But imagine having to go through that map and go, okay, I have to just target this one specific plant, regenerate it through the whole map and hope I don't fuck it up. Right. But, mm -hmm. but theirs isn't as simple as that. Theirs is okay. Now I got to go into this NOS client, this old 1.12 client, Set it up, line my character up, and make sure all the lighting looks the same. Mm -hmm. All these plants are replaced perfectly. Every rock's in the right place. Nothing's floating that wasn't floating back then. It's suddenly right. floating now. Um, that is not an easy process. That takes so much time. You'll see guys go in with full heads of normal color hair, come out gray-haired. Like It's <laughs> a stressful, yeah. stressful situation. Coders have the hardest job. They're the lowest paid in the industry. Mm -hmm. The lowest paid. And like, and not even to add a dark note, 
the highest suicide rate in any job next to guidance counselors is, is video game coders. Right. It's, it's a brutal job. You're locked in a room. You don't get to talk to people. And the only time people come in and talk to you, he goes, hey, you broke that. You broke that. Fix that. You broke it. And you're like, oh, my God, I got to go back and fix it. It's right. A, so when people are hard on these guys, at coders, it's okay. Yes, it's okay. Like those, I pay my coders well because I know what they go through. It's it's terrifying, <laughs> you know. Imagine right. being the one coder that broke the lighting in Classic Wow. Imagine the the pressure yeah. on that dude's back to make sure he got it right. <laughs> There's gonna be that one guy that goes. There's one pixel on the flag just outside of Undercity that's slightly different than it was back then. And I swear to God, I'm gonna boycott it. And then everybody else is making videos. Did you hear? Big news, big leak, guys. The one <laughs> pixel. Those changes confirmed. Changes confirmed. Next stop's looking for raid in the cash shop, guys. That oh, pixel yeah. up. Like that guy's going to get ridiculed, and they already are, right? Yeah. If it's not identical, there's an <laughs> army of people with shields up ready to, to bash that guy into the dirt. That pixel, yeah. So you got to be – people got to become more patient and understanding. Like if you're not a developer and you're not on the inside, oh, they got billions of dollars is the other argument. It doesn't matter. As I said before, you could have a billion dollars. You're never going to be prepared for the influx. You're never prepared for like what people are going to say. You don't know what critics are going to say. Blizzard has more writing on this than an indie company. An indie company is just like, here's my game for the first time. Right. What do you think? Blizzard's like, here's my game from 15 years ago. Did we fuck it up? Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. a scary process. It's like, I know we have everything laid out for you. Yeah. Uh, do you, can't do you possibly it, screw this up. Do you guys remember that mentioning the purple lamppost light in, yeah. uh, in West yeah, I, yeah. I hope I hope with full release Classic WoW this summer that they leave one lamp post that's purple. I think that would be like a really cool Easter egg. <laughs> yeah, that would be. That would be. Just that one guy, that one video. I found it. I yeah. found it. Yeah. Well, I, I think about this. It's just like, what a unique experience, right? You're coming out with a game. Uh, I mean, th this this whole situation, it's uh, obviously like OSRS, classic, all this stuff, but the the I think it's a very special experience to have so many people that know so much about your game that are already out there that can basically help you, right? Going back to using the community as a resource. So many people can help you like, hey, this was supposed to be this way. This is supposed to be like that. Uh, I, I think that's I think that's a very, very unique, special experience uh, or, or, or situation really uh that they can take advantage of and i mean you know like it's the, the the pixel thing whatever it's like sure like at the end of the day like that kind of stuff will get sorted out hopefully um the the big issues i think that a lot of people the big issues that a lot of people have are uh stuff like sharding and, and another one is loot trading and i, I kind of want to talk about that a little bit because uh we, we all have our have our gripes with loot trading and, and different ways that it, it's exploitable it's not entirely vanilla it's and not even not entirely it's not vanilla at all right to have loot trading uh, i think it's something that was added in wrath and i think they refined it in cataclysm then later on with personally like I'm, I'm not sure because i kind of i kind of fell off after that point but um i don't know what are your I, i've talked about loot trading before Chrome, what's your thoughts on loot trading it, should, it shouldn't exist i mean yeah. it, there, there's there, there's no argument i've heard that's made it sound good i've heard i've heard plenty of like you know calm positive arguments in its favor the, the thing about classic wow was that it was unforgiving and it taught you valuable lessons if you got ninja you knew who to blacklist if you if you screwed up a loot drop in a raid and you accidentally took it and you had to contact the gm that was a lesson for you like be careful don't screw yeah. this up like to like oh well, I, we don't want to take away the resources. This is what you know when I say well, oh, Blizzard may have billions of dollars, but this this is another time where I can turn the opposite and say well, they have billions of dollars. Shut up! Like there's no there's literally no excuse not to have a GM available and ready on every single one of these servers. Which who knows the number of the servers, but I imagine it's going to be small at first. They should have enough GM resources to fix those sorts of issues. Mm -hmm. You know, like GM interaction in Classic is just as important. Having people not make mistakes is important. Giving people these safety nets, this loot trading stuff. Like, let's forget about, like, the obvious exploitation, which I know, I mean, there's people, like, in the call that have said, like, publicly on stream, if they have this, and I'm absolutely exploiting the shit out of this. I will exploit it. Like, that's, there's people I know. It, it's personally, it's too do it. easy They're to not, do it, yeah. It's too yeah. easy not to do it. This is, this is a race to get to the end of the content. you got three of your friends in a group with you and one random, and he needs your stuff. All your friends are going to roll on it and screw that guy over. Yeah. Uh, even though yeah. You, you, you four friends would be like, ah, oh, high five, good job. He just fucked that guy out of a real experience, a real piece of gear who genuinely needed it. Um, that's not cool. I just it, it, even that one small example is is toxicity on a level classic doesn't need. And right? it's gonna uh, happen day in day. That example in particular, like 
even though it's just one example, it's something that's going to happen every single day, hundreds, if not thousands of times per day. And I think Blizzard, they might be a little misguided here. The reason why they're implementing loot trading, and they alluded to this at BlizzCon, is because they want to save costs more or less on customer support. Money. Yeah. They want to save money on customer support. Um, probably back in vanilla, a million tickets raised every day. Oh my God, I accidentally you know, gave somebody the, the wrong piece. I meant to click on this guy, gave it to that guy or something along those lines. But what they've inadvertently done is they've actually just you know, put money, it took money out of one pocket, put it in the other. Now you're going to have customer support tickets every single day about the guy that got scammed by the four other guys in the group and he's going to be complaining oh my god i just got ninja looted these guys are rolling on on gear uh, that that doesn't belong to them or that they don't even qualify to use and he's going to raise a fit and you're going to see a fit on forums your cms are going to have to be more active on the forums putting out fires it's it's almost like you've just exchanged one problem for another and you know why not just keep it as it was keep the fans happy at the same time if anything i think it would be less expensive to keep it as it was but. yeah well yeah because I mean, people are still going to report they're still going to report and each i mean whenever you report and you you have interactions you have to pay those people that are handling all this stuff it costs them money right exactly um, sorry stay safe you, you want to go ahead and go before i well yeah on. what i was going to say is i think crom touched on a very positive uh, on a very good note i mean one of the highlights of vanilla wow is player agency decision making yes thinking ahead ramifications for positive actions as well as negative actions i would rather them like if, if if it has to be either or if they are really really concerned and dead set on not spending more money on hiring more gms to deal with you know this sort of stuff i i'd prefer a tough shit policy where yes. if you if you screw up and give someone the wrong item or whatever whatever happens too bad just deal with it and i'd rather them just come out and say hey in a blue post we're using a tough shit policy it's too bad yeah i would 100 percent prefer that to to loot trading of any sort Dude, so, like so that. to that point um i 100 percent agree i i think that look i look it's classic okay let's it's a little bit different now people don't want to take responsibility for their actions but we're playing classic we're gonna we're gonna take some responsibility and i'll tell you guys straight up especially because I, I saw him here in the chat uh i mean i'll tell you the first time we killed chromagus uh, i you know i i master looted and i, and I think <laughs> I master looted and everybody's yelling. Everybody's yelling at freaking deputy because deputy's popping off and it's like, stop, stop, deputy, calm down. And then I accidentally click deputy's name and I give him the the mage tier two shoulders and he's playing a hunter. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've screwed up too. And that's my fault, right? <laughs> everybody's yeah, screaming yeah, at freaking yeah. deputy and I'm like, God, so here it goes. So I, wow. I give him the mage tier two shoulders and I felt like a freaking moron. And this happened on stream and I just was like a hunter item, of course. Yeah. Every item. Yeah, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I think that I, I personally, my own personal opinion is, hey, that's my fault. And I, I you know, that, that that's what we have to deal with now. Uh, I think that when it comes to a cost thing, uh, I think that if this is the issue... I mean, it's not really, it's not going to be a thing, right? People put in tickets, sorry, we don't handle that. It, it is what it is. Uh, yeah. But if they absolutely have to have some form of system in there, 100%, they're like, no, we're not, we're not budging on having some system in place to, to, to fix some of that stuff. Uh, I think having a situation where it only works whenever you're like master looting in raids, uh, like master loot is enabled in raids and... Uh, master looter screws up. Yeah, master looter screws up and it goes to the wrong person. Uh, now the the issue with that, there's still an issue with that, and that's if you're running like a pug group, right? Let's say you're running a pug raid and uh, somebody wins something, but they're actually just like a surrogate for the loot. Like there's still ways to exploit this. Like there's still ways to to screw people over. Uh, yeah, just don't don't give them an like, easy pipeline though. You know, if you, you could do it, you could do it, but just give them an easier way to do it. Yeah. Well, like, imagine this. Ima work. Imagine imagine you're a master looter of a guild and yeah. a piece drops and you give it to tips. And I wanted the piece, and I say, Tips, listen. I whisper him, I said, Tips, listen, I'll give you 300G for that piece. Yeah. And Tips is like, oh, you know, like, that's pretty good. Okay, and so we, we do a little backdoor trade. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not good for the guild. That's not, that, that undermines your authority as master looter or GM or officer. Yeah. There are problems with that as well, right? There's still problems yeah. with that. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think it alleviates, like, the, the uh, process of kind of clicking up. I, I, it fixes the five-man dungeon problem, right? So the five-man dungeon problem is... You, you end up, a lot of people say, oh, well, this is good because it promotes you. 
excuse me, promotes you playing with friends and doing all this stuff. And it's like, not really. It, it promotes you kind of developing a clique and you just hang out with your little pockets of people and little groups of people. Oh, well, I'm not doing that if I, have, if I don't have two people with me. I'm not, yep, I'm not going to, I'm not going to run Baron without two people I know, you know? That's so, a common thing. I, I, I read like four times in a chat. I won't, I won't play with people I don't know if this system goes through. Like there, there, there ruins the entire essence of classic WoW. The social experience, even if it's even if it's a small majority of people that, that say I won't play with anybody unless it's this, like you're still killing a huge part of what classic WoW is. Like if I I've got you, I do pugs all the time. I don't care how big my guild is. Yeah. Some uh, how how many how many times you've been in a guild with friends? You're really close friends. You're like, no, I'm not helping you with this dungeon. I got my own shit to do. Right. People will do what they want to do. People have their own agenda, and they're in your guild. You can't always get a group of your friends, mm -hmm. and then if you're stuck with a fear of grouping with people you don't know you're just you're just stuck like you're creating you're creating mm -hmm. toxic systems that exist in current wow today like right. it, my my stance will always be if it wasn't in classic wow it shouldn't be in classic wow classic wow was successful because of the formula they had the changes made throughout the expansions after or what made wow what it is today yeah oh we just who do we lose we lose tips okay tips yeah he's back he's back uh, uh yeah when it comes to when it comes to uh when it comes to systems specifically, right? It's like we say no changes specifically, like, you know, just, just getting more specific than no changes. It's the systems that are added like loot trading and stuff like this later on. And wow, that uh, are the biggest problems. Right. Yep. Um, yep. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously no changes, everything like, you know, everybody says that it's a very big blanket statement, but whenever you want to dive right in, uh, I, I think that's like the number one biggest thing on the no changes list is uh, adding in these new systems. I think that um, now, now, kind of going back to your your example, stay safe. Like, so when when you know from from the perspective of me, like as a guild leader, if I find out somebody in my now, I don't even want to have to deal with that, right? I don't, I don't want to have to deal right. with that. But uh, if I notice something like that does happen, that's somebody that like, look, you're not you're not going to be in the guild very long. Like, that's not going to be an issue. Like, like it's not not going to be an issue, but that's not going to be an issue going forward because uh, I'm I'm not gonna. I, I don't want to mess with that. Like, that's just something that right. I'm like, I'm not having any of that. Like you screw up once, then you're done. And then other people will hear about it. Um, I don't know. And some guilds might care. Some guilds might not care because you are playing in a world where your reputation matters and, and everybody understands that. But um, that's kind of how I feel about that. And another thing, just to clarify, because we talk about player agency a lot and uh, just to kind of define what agency is, like whenever we talk about player agency, that's basically the concept of like, so, so, so your decisions matter. You have the ability to make decisions. Your decisions matter. And that as a player, you can kind of see like there are like you can see the consequences of your actions. You see the consequences of your decisions. Like you can you can assume like, hey, this is gonna, if I do this, this is going to happen. And I have I have the free will to do that. Um, whenever we talk about player agency. Well, it's, it's not it's not only the, the capacity to foresee consequences or, or positive effects, but it's also actually having to deal with them, right? Um, and that's that's really what it comes down to, I think. In retail, wow, in BFA, I mean, how many what how many things can you do in BFA? How many mistakes can you make that actually have long lasting negative ramifications on your gameplay? Very few, like really very few. I, I, could, I could barely find the only mistakes, the only things that has a lifetime or a permanent ramification is if you just don't, if you don't go get that item that's getting taken out of the game at this point in time, that's really the only thing you suffer from now on. Oh, I can't clear Mythic Kahoot, I'll just mm -hmm. do regular. You know, I can't clear Heroics, I'll just, you know, I'll just roll into regular dungeons. There's always something, there's a fail safe for everything. You can't really suffer in, in I mean, I guess you can. You don't, you know, the, the as a right thing, everything. You can go down all those other flawed systems, but at the end of the day, as far as like mistakes you make personally, uh, there's not very many you can make. It's, the freedom it's, to make our own mistakes is all we ever wanted, man. What yeah. happens when what happens when you take away when you take away punishment for your actions? Like it just turns into a cesspool, right? Yeah. If, yeah. You, if I like, why is well, the internet I'll, I'll so toxic? You. I'll tell what, you exactly. It, it, people turn into a bunch of whiny, spoiled brats that just want gimme, 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 and that's exactly where we're at with BFA and retail. Wow. Well. Yeah, that's well, exactly where we're at. What, yeah. Wasn't that yeah. movie? Wasn't there a movie, The Purge, or something, where it was like there was 24 hours where like there was no law enforcement or something, and just yeah, I, I haven't seen it, but that, that was like the premise of the movie, right? Where it's yeah. like if people can just do whatever they want with no repercussions, they're just gonna go ham, and it's not gonna be good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's 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 uh it's rich kid syndrome. There's a there's there's an actual like like medical term for these people now, but when you're when you're 
when you're when you're handed everything your whole life and then you're suddenly shoved into a situation where you have to take care of yourself people shut down and become insanely toxic like there's i've met a few people that that are like this where it's just you you've lived your whole life without any uh, affluenza there you go there he's right affluenza someone chat got it. affluenza is the actual is the actual term medically for for this condition and it's just people who have gone their whole life without any any sort of like repercussions for their actions they've never had to be financially responsible for themselves they've had they've been handheld the entire time uh, uh through the life and, and the medical condition is that they, they they cannot be punished for their actions in the real world because they've never had a punishment their whole life therefore they don't know what what right from wrong is and so mentally they have this safety blanket that protects them it's almost like they're neutral from your your laws yeah, because, it's dumb. yeah it's i know i know dumb. omega low yeah it is spoiled trust me i'm yeah. not saying affluenza is great <laughs> right now writing this down like oh shit i am getting out of this yeah. <laughs> i have a mental condition i, I don't know better you know uh, but it's literally, like you're literally giving people an out as to why they are this way uh when you create these systems yeah it's not good like, yeah you, not everybody should have it it's it's the as i said it's all entitlement every it started back in blizzard's Dia blizzard's downfall came from diablo 3 was the age of entitlement from blizzard like when they started doing Diablo three, they started giving everybody everything. I watched people on forums literally boycotting, making YouTube videos, screaming. I saw I, there was pictures of people like marching outside of Blizzard headquarters because they weren't getting a Diablo three pennant that said they were part of the closed alpha for family and friends only. You imagine that having people protesting your game because they didn't get into the family and friends alpha exclusive banner that you got. I got a little yeah. flag called one of the chosen from playing in the friends and family alpha for Diablo. I proudly display it every time I come in game because I know there's going to be some spurg from back in 2015 that was like, hey, get that, I hate you. And, yeah. and I'll, as soon as I'm in a random group with like a, 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 a level farming group for the new season, I drop the flag and you'll usually see a guy leave. Fuck this. He's it's so gone. funny. It's, yeah, it's ridiculous. He's still, he's still mad to this day that he didn't get something everyone else got. Well, I'm sorry you weren't there, you know, but that's not how it works, yeah. you know. But if Blizzard keeps catering to that mentality and then trying to introduce those systems in the classic, classic ends up like every other game they've made right. since then. It ends up being a hand-holding game where everybody gets what they want. Because if Blizzard's main can say, oh, we got to add in these graphics because we don't want to upset this new demographic. Fuck that demographic. It's not for them. And if they don't, <laughs> if it's, they don't uh, yeah. enjoy the if they don't enjoy the game as is, as in the true classic experience, and they'll never really like classic WoW because there's a whole lot more visually that, or than visuals that are going to affect them. There are systems that they're just never going to get the grasp of. You think any random player is going to understand like how the PVP ranking system goes? I watched I watched Stay Safe's video breaking down the the ranking system, and my head was still like, whatever, dude. Just I'm just going to grind it till I get it because this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, but there was logic and there was effort put into it, and like you know, a, 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 a person who can really really cares about it can sit there and understand the mathematics behind it but the average player is going to look at what he says and go that's retarded i'm not doing that right right and they're just and they're just and they're, i'll just grind for 14 days every day for the next or you know or for a couple, several months yeah. for the next couple of months until i get ranked 14 hope i get there right um and, well, and, but, and i think like, like kind of to that point like uh, and going back to what you said about like this this game is for certain people i, I don't think that you should necessarily like shut the game out to uh, a certain group of players but at the same time that certain group we lost tips again but um i don't think you should necessarily shut the uh shut like a certain group of players out but at the same time like different games are for different people and if you don't like a game that's fine like don't try and change it and and essentially ruin it for the other people that do like it right yeah and, and that's, that's just at the end of the day like that's that's just what it is uh, well, I, I think it's also possible that within the same game, you can have different systems that cater to different crowds. So, for example, the ranking system like you brought up caters to an extreme, no life, probably unemployed uh, gamer base. And that's right. fine. That's fine. That is in the game. And But but I don't think that the more casual people should feel entitled to that. At the same time, I, I feel like Vanilla WoW is also very, very appealing and rewarding for casual players. Right. Nothing, nothing should change about that. I think you can cater to both audiences very well within the same game. The problem is when you start bending over backwards to try to make the, the experience the same for everyone. That's, uh -huh. that's where these problems arise. That's, that's impossible. That is, that is the, the, making games is all about balance. You cannot balance that period yeah like trying to have the whole have, having the whole world like in one big melting pot like <laughs> i don't know look at it from any 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 aspect it doesn't work it doesn't work you can't do that like it, it's not it's you know hey se se separating your player base uh seems like a bad idea to a certain extent but like he said 
that rank 14 group of people those are diehards those people who are clearing raids like day like you know the day of release like that's well not you know obviously four well, days later everyone's already running at level 58 clearing molten core and stuff like that like that's their own personal hardcore experience. yeah that's not that's not the rest of the game there's still hundreds you know hundreds of people in one area still doing the same quests that were like you know two days ago that guy's already in a raid no one right. cares there's thousands of people still playing millions of people still playing that are not progressing that far not doing rank 14 uh and it, uh, there's also proof in the pudding that you could go get you could go f grind all like every single month for rank 14 and still get your ass kicked by a guy mm -hmm. in pre-raid bis like yeah it doesn't matter you know like these people like oh i'll never get rank 14 you got to make the system easier it's like you trust me the guy's getting rank 14 is probably not going to be that good yeah, I mean, there, there are people that are just going to just grind it out just like meticulously, just like just push through, push through, push through and just play all day and, and get rank 14. That's fine. I think it's still impressive. It's just like a, it's just a different type of thing. So I, I was talking to some of the uh, I was talking to some friends in, in Salad Bakers and Progress the other day uh, about how like there, there's some things that like whenever like you have people like more in the high end community, uh, like people talk about certain things like oh well it would it would technically it would be better if this was this it would be better if that was that and it's like yeah it would be better for for you maybe right it would be better for this this one percent um but the game the game is designed to fit like a a, a, a wide variety of people and that's why th that kind of goes back to what i was saying like the game is already designed to fit for casual players it's designed to fit for hardcore players there's different like playing methods but if you don't fit into one of those things and you don't like the game that's totally fine but whenever you start changing stuff to kind of fit like your personal agenda more and this is what i told them like you know sure like you could make classic a little bit more hardcore at the high end and do this and do that you could take out world buff but that's not good for everybody right that that's good just for you and it's not good for the entirety of the game and um uh, it the, the same goes on the other end of the spectrum for for maybe the more casual side right like if, if you do that then you then you're negating like this group of people and you're you're negating the massive massive uh i guess like middle uh, like I guess middle middle class of the game, right? Yeah. But um, but yeah, let's let's kind of move on. Let's kind of move on from this. We we we, we kind of uh, we we were well on the topic of like loot trading and all this stuff, and we kind of got off topic a little bit. Um, but uh, let's talk about the the concept of phased content, phased content release. Uh, it's something that you know I this is this was my personal opinion on phased content release, and uh, I, I'm I talked about this a little bit before BlizzCon. Uh, I said that there's a chance that and it, it kind of hinges on the concept of progressive itemization. And if you have phased content release, then they more than likely won't be doing a true, uh, they, they won't be doing true progressive itemization patch by patch, right? Because if they're not, okay, this is the 1.1, this is the 1.2, no, this is 1.3. Just, just to clarify, you're not talking about like phasing, you're talking about about yeah. progressive content release progressive okay, content release clarify. yeah so when okay. we say phase we're talking about in chunks right because they they talked about phased content release and what what they meant by phased content release is uh putting the the patches out in chunks uh right. they, they proposed four but kind of going back to what i was saying um if there's less patches essentially if there's less content chunks that means there's there's probably less uh they're they're not going to get as specific with progressive itemization and uh, progressive itemization is something that really has, hasn't been done perfectly on, on any sort of private server or anything in the past. Some of the, uh, like nostalgia, like they kind of started the whole thing with like, Hey, let's try and make it as true to blizzard as possible. And they did some things early that they did some things that like whenever they, they shouldn't have been done. And, uh, I, I think there's different parts to progressive itemization. Uh, a lot of times people talk about progressive itemization as, you know, one specific thing, like one specific concept, but, uh, there's different parts to it where, when do you release an item? When do you like, when do items get taken out of the game and when do items change like statistically? So I think that, and this is something that some people say like, well, this, this really caters to the, to the higher end player base, right? Cause they know all this stuff and they might do certain things, at different patches. Uh, but I think it actually, it's just better for everybody altogether. Right. Whenever they uh, update certain items at certain times, you don't want to have a situation where uh, Titanic leggings are, are, you know, they, they drop in the 1.10 patch. There's all kinds of 1.11 uh, or I think 1.10 patch. Uh, yeah, it was 1.10 patch where they changed a lot of the dungeon loot. They added in items like Heart of Warm Phallic and stuff like that uh, into the earlier dungeons. Well, these are like the Nax Blues. Some people call them Nax Blues. Um, that kind of stuff's not good for the game, right? Because if you're putting that in the game from the very beginning, then you have a situation where people lose that sense of progression and um, developing your character throughout the throughout the scope of vanilla, right? Um, 
I proposed like a two year like phase content release. They said, this is what Blizzard said. They said four different phases. And in the first phase, they wanted to put out uh, Molten Core, Onyxia, Dire Maul, uh, Azergos, and Kazik. The second phase, they said they wanted to do Blackwing Layer and the Honor System and ZG, I believe. In the third phase, they wanted to do AQ40, uh, Tier 0 0.5, or Dungeon Set 2, whatever you want to call it, the Emerald Dragons, and um, I mean, that kind of Cenarian hold, that, that, that whole thing kind of goes along with AQ40. Uh, and then the, um, then the last phase would just be like the next patch, essentially, with the, the Scourge Invasion and all that. Uh, this is something that I didn't think was good. I, I, I did not like that. Uh, I, I thought that's not nearly enough patches, and I think that they should spread it out a little bit more for a few reasons, but what do you guys think? Tips, what do you think? Absolutely. Um, I, I think the general consensus, and I agree with it 100%, is that you really want at least six stages, bare minimum. Um, and the way you would phase it out is you would remove the world bosses and Dire Maul from launch. You would have that after Molten Core and Ani, and then you would separate ZG uh, from BWL. We're talking about raids here more specifically, but you would separate ZG from BWL maybe a couple months after um, and kind of have that more or less on its own um, with a couple of other things. But yeah, I, I think it's problematic. Um, obviously, with Dire Maul at launch, you have world buffs at launch. Which, with, with Dire Maul at launch, you have a lot of gear that was, especially a lot of caster gear, that's much better than or very equivalent to some of the stuff that drops in like Molten Core. It ruins the progression curve. On top of that, it makes raids easier. And then obviously ZG, um, just it brings a lot of consumables to the game and it brings a lot of catch-up gear to the game. It doesn't have an attunement or anything like that. So it's like it would be ideal to split it up in at least six phases. Um, and we're not even talking about the itemization here. I mean, we, I'm guessing... You know, when I heard them say stages and not patches, I'm guessing that means we are not going to get any kind of progressive itemization. Maybe the only thing they give is, you know, the, the Nax Blues, like the Scourge Invasion Blues. Maybe <clears throat> those come in later on with their respective patches or their respective stages. But it sounds like all of the items will probably be changed in their 112 state at launch. That kind of stuff, it, it, you know, it's it's pretty destructive. What do you think, Stacey? I was going to say, I, if I had to bet, I think that probably new items will be introduced um, with each stage, but we will not see any itemization updates on, on previous items. I don't think we'll see items change throughout. Um, the impression I got was that, you know, they have this old backup of 1.12 they found in the box, whatever. I don't even know if they have itemization prior to that. It, I would speculate probably not. They have a replica of 1.12. I don't know if they have anything before that. Um, I think they said that the earliest patch they had, uh, maybe I heard it wrong, but they said the earliest patch they had was like 1.8 or something. Does that mean they don't have like the 1.1 to 1.7 data? I, I don't I, know. I think whenever they said something about that, I think they meant like just from like a full on like what they had standpoint. Because we, we've heard this multiple times. Blizzard was a different company back then. And it was a lot more like now it's a lot more professional. Right. And in some ways that's good. In some ways that's bad. Right. But, um, yeah. you know, there's pros and cons to everything, but, uh, they didn't really do a good job of like keeping their notes and stuff. And that's why, like, I mean, John, John said that, like, that, that was the big thing with John doing the wild diary is like, yeah, like they didn't really have a lot of records. Like he had a lot of what they had, you know, like in terms of keeping notes and stuff. Um, yeah. So it's for that I, reason, I think we'll probably not see itemization prior to 1.12 or 1.8. I, I don't remember the 1.8 comment. I think probably 1.12 on top of that. They've said that they're looking for a formula that they can replicate over and over and over again to relaunch and re-release Classic WoW for over a decade. The the timeline they gave us was like the the, the year quantity that they floated in our conversation with them was 15 years. They're thinking yeah. 15 years in advance with Classic WoW. They want to release it over and over and over again. Yeah, I, I think there's... there's I, I, I do kind of think like if they have crazy and drastic itemization changes, you know, every couple months... You, like I, I do think we are concerned about it because we're in the upper percent of players knowledge-wise. Um, but I think that that can be very, very confusing for your average future classic WoW player. Don't you think? If every couple of months well, they're doing huge itemization overhauls. They'll eventually get it. I mean, that's the thing, though, is, I mean, like, like those these old-school MMOs were daunting as is. I mean, no one's going to come into classic WoW and just get it, right? Like, like these itemization yeah. changes, like, it, it comes with it. Not only does it come with it, but it's also part of, like, 
the lifespan of these servers, right? Like these little mini micro patches that happen every couple of weeks and every couple of months that just add a few changes here and there that were within classic, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. Like they're little milestones. You knew what to do. They gave you different goals. Like the private server community, when you talk about a formula, a tried and true formula, like the, the, the slow item itemization and slow like content progression was, was so important to the lifespan of those servers. Right. A any, ser any server that added rush content, any server that bundled content together fell off right. hard, right? Like for a reason, because, you know, like, like you said, the economy gets, the economy can get ruined with Dire Maul on release as well as certain gear just becoming like three months worth of gear just becoming useless. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. who, wa who wants that? Like, who I mean, wants what, to what, what, I mean, a counterpoint, what we've seen on private services is people pooling resources months in advance because they know they'll be valuable six months down the road. Right. Um, they'll get items in, in Molten Core knowing they're bad right now, but in a couple months, they'll be very, very good. We're talking huge stockpiles of like Elemental Earth, for example, or materials to make Hide of the Wild, stuff like that. It definitely does go both ways. Mm -hmm. so it goes both ways, but like once again, like that's, that's a single private server with like a single population, you know, comprised of people from all over the world, you know, working together after years and years of being on these single servers with each other. Now we're opening it up to a massive population. Of course, there's going to be some of that stuff going on, but that's the essence of classic, right? That's the essence. If these if these people know how to farm that stuff, they'll know how to farm it. But the, the average player won't know that difference. They yeah. won't really know that difference. They're not going to understand it. So like, there's no point in changing it for those who who won't even understand what's going on. They'll just say like, oh wow, maybe I should go farm these things like these guys are doing, right? You know, just right. to do that, make the effort. It just it just you know to to make that change to to release this content early. Like it's, it's, here's what you say. You sac you sacrifice a couple people pooling stuff early to like blow up the economy later. Something we've all worked through on private servers multiple times or make three months worth of content feel absolutely useless. So here's the thing with itemization. Like we have to decide on the interval frequency with which they're changing because literally every Tuesday, all through vanilla, literally every Tuesday, all through vanilla. Wow. Yeah. There were itemization <laughs> changes. There were yeah. no, there, there were itemization changes yeah. every Tuesday. So do you, do you want itemization changes every Tuesday or every month or every two months or four times? Does they suggest like, so you, it's, there will be a change. The change, the, the, the contingency is how frequent do you want the changes to take place? Well, so, and this is, this is kind of where like my thought on the face content release comes in and how I, like I, I propose like a, a six, seven step step stage uh, content release where during certain points, during certain phases of content release, uh, during certain stages of content release, uh, they make certain changes that are like really the, the big changes, right? Where um, we're talking about like the the maybe the tier two updates, uh, the PvP gear updates, stuff like that that kind of plays a big role. The dungeon gear updates, like Savage Gladiator Chain, for example, is a chess piece from the uh, BRD, right? Blackrock Depths Arena event. It is an epic chess piece that is a male chest with defense on it early on, and then it changes. Uh, it changes by the 1.10 patch, I think, to be arguably the best chest for plate DPS for melee for well for physical DPS. Uh, it's, I, mean, I think it's really good for hunters too, uh, but I know for uh, for warriors and for paladins, like you know, you have the Avengers chest for paladins, but for warriors specifically, they have the I think it's Breastplate of Annihilation is, is what it's called, uh, from AQ40. And that chest ends up being the second best chest to that. So if you have that in from the beginning of the game, that's just like one more thing that uh, I think in a later phase is whenever they need to update some of this stuff like that to, to fix that. Um, well, look at it from a small scale then. If you have, like, because you have these lists of these items, like it's not a big list, right? Like it's not like it's millions of items that are going to change and become drastic and ruin the game. There's, it, it, I mean, it could be a couple of hundred items here or there, but if these, if there's 10 years worth of data showing which items drastically change the game, all Blizzard's got to do is look at that list and, and then tweak those items specifically. Just look at these items and say, okay, when this item changed, it changed the game. This actually becomes best in slot. I mean, if it's t 10 items, 20 items, or even just a thousand items in that database of millions and millions of items, they could, they could easily just look at that and say, okay, which just phase these items and slowly phase these changes and slowly mm -hmm. for this, these specific ones. So this isn't completely game breaking. So these items in Molten Core are actually worthwhile. Now, the, the counter argument is that how many people are actually going to get to those items? It's not like, you know, yeah. it's not like you just log in and, hey, I got the best in slot item. You know, now I don't have to mm -hmm. farm this thing in Molten Core. Not everyone's going to get it. Right. Um, 
but some you still people want aren't to... gonna level yeah like i was thinking about the dire mall thing like some people won't even hit level 60 in three months you know like nope. realistically like we're talking most, about people, most never... people will not most yeah people will not. well so so this is the argument uh so i got a chance to to talk to ian hazacostas like i i got like lucky and ran into him at the hotel lobby and and i talked to him for a little bit uh and i brought up some of my concerns to him and one of the things was like phase content release and you know we just we just talked about a bunch of random stuff and uh for example dire mall Dire Mall, it, it released like, uh, you know, less than a month after launch on EU servers. And then uh, way back then, you know, a lot of people didn't hit level 60 before Dire Mall came out. And that's kind of like why I think I think that's why they kind of think that, well, if we put Dire Mall in on launch, it's not going to be that bad. But the issue is uh, players have just gotten better. I think so. There's a difference here. Way back then, nobody had any clue what the frick was going on. Uh, and then you have the private server kind of crew which i think private server players as a general population uh are players that are, are a little bit more in the cut like they kind of know a little bit more they're they're a little bit more involved they know what's going on and then you're going to have the the big wow classic release audience which is going to be a mix of both right because there are more resources available to you uh that people have kind of learned and, and everything that people have figured out in the last 14 years uh being applied to the people that had no idea what the crap's going on so uh, I think you're going to have this issue where there there is kind of like a happy medium there and there are going to be people that the average level time to 60 is going to be much faster than it was in retail vanilla WoW. But it's not going to be quite as fast as it was on private servers. On private yeah. servers, uh, like the, the last two like most popular ones, uh, the average leveling time was between like 10 and 12 days played time. I, I don't think it's going to be quite that fast. But if you have people who you have this 1%, again, you, you don't want to necessarily cater to the 1%. If you have Dire Mall in on launch, this 1% is just going to get a massive lead uh, over the casual players. And uh, I think, you know, somebody said earlier, um, you know, all this talk about itemization and these little like, you know, micro developments, right? These little small changes that happen throughout the course of vanilla is giving me a headache, right? Somebody said that. And, and, and this is something that I, I do think if you're Blizzard, you might look at that and think that's a concern. Right. That, oh, well, like the average player isn't going to understand everything that's going into this and everything that's changing. And uh, it, it might be off putting. But I would actually argue the opposite. Right. Because sometimes you don't really know what's going on. You don't really know what's going to change and what's happening here. Uh, but something changes and it keeps you involved in the game. Uh, I think a lot of times Blizzard ends up like they, they, they try and artificially do this, this sense of progression and the sense of just constant small wins that are happening throughout the course of vanilla. They do it artificially by adding in like the concept of like time gating content and uh, stuff like this to where it ends up like, like I said before, in an RPG, you don't necessarily want to make people have to play a certain way. Um, yeah. That's that's not good, right? And, and that's a little bit of what happens with BFA. And I know I felt that on launch because I, I messed up and then everybody was way ahead of me. Like, it, was, it was like a huge mess and I couldn't out grind it. I couldn't just like stay up all night and out grind it. Uh, it, it I didn't have that agency, right? Yeah. So... That's uh, that's basically like how I how I feel about that. I I, I think they should just, um, I mean, just kind of do it that way. What do you guys think? I will yeah. point out a very interesting note. Mm -hmm. um, they're releasing their content in four stages. That's actually almost identical to Retail WoW in terms of Retail WoW typically has four major content mm -hmm. patches. You have the launch, then you have the point one patch, point two patch, point three patch. Mm -hmm. That's more or less been their formula for the past two or three expansions. And I think what. I think Sorry. the reason why they, they've chosen four stages, think about how seamlessly you can weave those stages now into retail while content patches. I think it was in Legion, I believe, where every single content patch was almost formulaically released every 77 days exactly. Imagine now you have a situation where you can kind of weave classic WoW content patches within that mm -hmm. predefined interval. And all of a sudden you've basically given your players double the content for the same price, nobody's going to quit World of Warcraft at that point because you're always going to have content to do, whether it be in retail or in classic. Right. Well, and the problem with that, though, is is you're banking on not you, but but as Blizzard, like they would be banking on uh, people wanting to play both versions of the game. And well, sure, you, you want to have that available to them. And that's why they're making the subscription link to where you don't have to pay anything extra. You just pay the same exact amount of money to play classic and BFA together, uh, which I think was cool. I thought that was a really good move by them. Um, but you, you need to keep people engaged and you need to p keep people subbed, 
right? Because the way it is now, like it doesn't have to be it, like just just talking about it realistically. Like if they're not doing true progressive itemization, it, it doesn't have to be exactly like okay, on this day this happens, this day this happens. But um, where you're going 1.1 to 1.12. But if they're dead set on doing the phased content release, then they need to have the big events spaced out properly. Like you know, I said like one and a half months for Dire Maul and Azergos and, and Kazakh, and you could go even longer. You can go like two months with that, right? Yeah. Um, but I, I kind of, I, I personally just kind of gave like a rough idea uh, in, in my last video where I kind of give the full story of BlizzCon and uh, my own personal thoughts a little bit more in depth. But I think going on a two-year cycle and you can go with like, you know, zero months is MC, six months is BWL, the next, you know, the next six months is AQ40 and then uh, the six months after that is Nax, and that's very similar to the uh, to the retail vanilla WoW timeline. I, I think it was like seven months and five. Like so, so BWL I think was eight months after launch. I think AQ to Nax was like five months, um, but it was it was very similar to that, and that gives you plenty of time. You you go six months, you go six months after Nax, and then at the six month mark is whenever they release uh, maybe a set of fresh servers. They release Classic Burning Crusade, and then at that point, maybe they make a set of servers that are like 1.12, like holding servers, right? For people who just want to play 1.12 vanilla forever. Um, somebody actually commented about this in my YouTube video, and they they, they showed me a clip of uh, Swifty saying like he's like I didn't want vanilla, and I just wanted to play vanilla forever. And and I think there are people like that, and there's an audience for people who are going to want to do that. And that's a scenario where you could copy your character over to a, like a 1.12. It's just going to be like this forever. People can make new characters there and, and just play 1.12 vanilla WoW with everything in from the beginning. And everybody kind of goes in and all the people that want to play like that have a community of people that want to play like that. And the server doesn't just like get torn apart to like down to 100 people. And the survival rate of those servers are going to be 10 times that of what private servers have. Yeah. So, and, and you're going to and you're going to have people from other sides come in, too. So it's going to be even better. Exactly, because private server, private server like fresh servers like kill off the old server just because the population is so small. It's you know everybody from this one community is moving over to that one new server, mm -hmm. um, and it's all it's only ten thousand active players, right? You know, so when half of that population goes, then you leave the other server half empty. But you got millions of people in the mix. It's a completely different thing. You know, not everybody cares about continuing the same storyline over and over and over again. So there, you you're not wrong. I know people who will happily live in uh, post next vanilla forever you know yeah. role play communities uh just content creators in general who just make a machine whatever you name it like there's lots of i mean just because you cleared next once you're fuck, you're fucking far from done in my yeah. opinion yeah like just because just because you think you're done like if that if that's your game your end game is just to say i did it and i'm done that that's guy's great. gone let him, yeah. let him let him move on but there are lots of people who are still going to be grinding out but i know i want a full set of tier three like i want yeah. to head to toe i want to i want to say i have it i want the ring I want the full set, nothing missing. I want it all just yeah. to say I finally, finally did it. I've done, I've gone through Nax Clear two times on private servers, um, and still never got a full set of gear. Right. And, right. and, 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 and when the new server came out, everybody moved on. I was like, oh, I'm not done yet. Like, let me, let me get one full set. Let me do one battleground with a full set of gear. Let me see how I do. Like, let me just try this fantasy I never got to experience. So let me let me ask you guys this. We've talked about what you guys want for content release timeline for like progressive content release. What do you expect them to do? What do you actually think that they'll do? Um, I think that if we can give good feedback, I, if, assuming they're listening, I think that they'll they'll increase the phases if we can continue to give good feedback. Like if we if we use the proper channels and. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I've, I've kind of tossed this around to different people. I showed, I showed kind of like my schedule on stream and I think people like, I mean, I, I think you can obviously tweak the numbers and I, I don't think that my, my way is a hundred percent the best way necessarily. I think it's just a way to do it that would be better than the way Blizzard kind of has proposed so far. And they said it's on the table, right? Um, yeah. now this is going to cost them more money. It's going to make, uh, it, it's, it's going to make the testing period a little bit more meticulous. Uh, so like, are they going to do it? maybe i would hope so right because it's worth it to it's them. worth it's it to make their game good like yeah. uh, i i think it, a four stage content understand. release is going to be boring honestly it could yeah. be i don't people, know people need to understand like this isn't about just be, like, being a dick saying no changes for no changes i want progression just because like this is about preserving the, the lifespan of the server like anytime like i make my arguments about these changes is because it, it's not because it's just some personal nostalgic thing. Like, I want to, you want you to go through all the hardships I went through because that's not what I want. I don't want you to have to experience all the horrible bugs and having a patch every week that changes your entire class. I hated that experience. Like the 1.12 private server experience I enjoyed was how long it lasted. 
You know, I, I logged into a fresh server and I didn't think to myself, oh, a couple months from now, this server's going to be dead. You know, that whole, this will be dead in two months meme, com meme comes from rush content on shitty servers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. That, that That's a perfect example. Like what, what was, what's the downfall of almost every TBC server that came out? What it was two times, four times experience gain, uh, content becoming obsolete before you can even finish it. The server was dead content. There was rage released before they were supposed to and dead. Right. It, that's, right. All, that's all it took. It just, it just, it just killed it. Um, this is about lifespan, not about like, you know, trying to have memories. Like I, I'm, I, I argue all the time. This is this is how I'm not trying to go back and date my old girlfriend from 10 years ago, wear the same t-shirt, eat all the same snacks and like play on my old monitor. Like I'm not doing that. Like those, those, the, those nostalgic memories wore off after my fourth rogue to 60, right? Like that right. wore off a long time ago. Uh, for me, it was just about enjoying the time with my friends. I like spending months on these servers. I don't want it to die quickly. Uh, I don't want people to quit because the economy's trash because of a, a, a dungeon being released too soon. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want people to log in and see like on the Blizzard on, on Blizzard news, the Dire Mall patch, like artwork, like, poof, it's coming out, you know, the, the ogres are rising up. This is happening. Like those little events, those milestones, that mm -hmm. those are the important, those are important patches. We don't have to go back and do every single individual item change, just the ones that are detrimental. Right. right? That's, a, that's a small list. There's a small list of items that can destroy the game, just like negate content, ruin it. You right. can take that small list as long as you're positive about it and you're representing like people, people that like are they're super spurgy about their their argument. They're never going to get listened to. They're never going to listen. List, Blizzard like, flips through trash all day long. Like you'd be surprised how how often those CMs actually read your post mm -hmm. and how often they just skim by it because they're horrible comments, you know. Uh, but they, I can tell they're listening. You just have to keep pushing this. No, like when we say no changes, don't say just no changes. Explain. Explain we why. Just, explain why and, and make sure it's a better answer than just like because i just wanted to remember it that way they're not mm -hmm. going to rebuild your memories this is about preserving the server's life making it last as long as possible without making people yeah. bored yeah. some private servers figured out that method you know there is even when it comes to small things like having the original mount system mm -hmm. so when when they bring in the new epic models you have the option can i keep my ivory raptor or should i upgrade and get the armored orange raptor you know do i actually want to do this uh that 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 little moment is so great. You see that guy riding around on this white raptor. You're like, oh my god, where did you get that? Especially he came in late, and that's your little trophy. Oh, I was here from the beginning. This is the original mount. You know, then the event happened, and then you know these became. You know, now they're extinct. Whatever, whatever reason you want to come up with, these little milestones are something for people to look forward to. They're they're extra they're extra trophies that you can hold on to. They're the things that you remember from Classic WoW. Uh, that like that changed the way you played games forever. It gives people different things to be competitive about. You know, mm -hmm. if there's no PvP system implemented right away, what are people doing? They're doing world, they're just world PvPing for funsies, and the rest of them are just trying to get things that are about to get taken out of the game. You know, if you know about that, you know, um, I want those milestones for everybody because it, it extends the server life. It gives you something to talk about. It gives you goals that are that that aren't weren't designed by the game creators originally. You know, this isn't. Go get 10 items, bring it back to Farmer John because he wants them. This is, this mount's going to get taken out of the game within a few months. I have this much time to grind my my troll rep to get this to get this raptor. I have this much time to grind out this much gold to get that training. And if I miss it, I miss it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's gone forever. You know, and you'll remember when you get that. That moment is so freaking important. You know, just like everyone's first time getting their first epic. You never forget that, right? Imagine getting to relive that over and over again and it never gets old that's kind right. of that's kind of amazing that they were able to do that that system exists and it feels good you know every time i get my raptor it's amazing i've never gotten i've never gotten a thunder fury before right like, right never gotten it before and you have a certain amount of time to get that thunder fury uh you know you know your lifespan of your private service you know when max is eventually going to come out you know when you need to get this and still have it be viable right right like you, and, and then of course like all the work that goes into it that first time you get that it'll change your, it changes your gaming life right uh-huh how, yeah. how many I, I i'm still playing retail well to this day along with the private service i still don't have a freaking thunder fairy still don't have that mm -hmm. you know I, I'm, I, might, I may never get it but i what i was able to do was i was able to get that ivy raptor on those private servers and relive those moments i never had and they were glorious and they were i felt triumphant and amazing and it kept me coming back every day to that server and i was missing i was either missing work or skipping out on streams to play on nost every day and right. or to play on to play on to play on, even to play on lights open elysium afterwards i played on chronos mm -hmm. i played on phoenix wow like those servers the, this is the way they did it those that content progression and the lifespan of those servers 
what killed Lights Hope and Elysium all of them when they said we're gonna start rushing content out, do quick merges, change the change the they're like, We got twenty people who are bored. Let's uh, make sure they're happy. And those twenty people ruined private servers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's add sharding. Let's add dynamic respawn. Let's rush the content out faster. And these servers are dying really, really quick. Guilds are finishing it, and then nobody cares. As long as big guild number one defeats it, no one, no one cares anymore. It, it just seems it doesn't, it doesn't exist to them anymore. They, right. I don't know. I don't know any other way to put it. Rushing out the content's going to kill it. You can't, you can't do it. You know, you don't need to go through every individual item change. And, and be absolutely ridiculous. I don't expect them to go from 1.1 to 1.12 and do every individual change, but there was little milestones that these private servers did that were that were great. They they held back on certain item changes to not to, so they wouldn't destroy end game raid items and and destroy the timeline. And then they released little things like the gear changes from tier two. You know the appearances of tier right. two, the 1. appearances 9. of mountain changes. Like those are li- those are just great little things. You know like back in the day like oh man my tier two looks like crap when you were actually playing back in 2005 2006 <laughs> like no oh, my tier two looks terrible but like now when you play and you get that tier two it's a whole different thing like i i had it before it changed like, right, right. That, like i have this trophy like oh my god what gear is it oh this is actually blood fang no it's not like yeah it is this is how it used to like i got it before you yeah. um don't take away those moments from people like the, right. those little things like those those non well and, and i Right. Well, I, I was just gonna say, like, I think some things, like, and it might just be the way it is. Like, I, I think they might put in the like the new tier two from the beginning, right? Like, I, I don't, I yeah. don't think like stuff like that's gonna change. But like, it's not a big deal, of course. Yeah. Right. But like, you know, stuff like that originally did contribute to a lot of that. Um, let's kind of move on. Uh, let's kind of move on. Uh, alpha and beta projections. I, I think that's kind of the big question now after the demo. Is yeah, I think I think we should go into Q and A after we touch on this. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> um. Yeah, but after the uh, after the demo, everybody kind of is like, well, one's alpha, one's beta, and um, I hope that we get it soon. I think that uh, so so whenever whenever we were a part of that exclusive like press conference interview session uh, where we got a chance to be in there as a you know they they, they picked out some people and, and allowed them to go in there. Um, I asked John Height afterward, or I, I said to him, I was like, one of the most exciting things about a summer release means that. Uh, hopefully we're going to be getting an alpha or beta soon. And he said, yeah, Blizzard soon, you know, just kind of making a joke about it. Uh, but I do, I do really think that, I mean, that basically conver- con- confirms that they, yes, they are going to have an alpha beta testing period. Uh, and I do think it's going to be very important. That's kind of, you know, we've, we've talked about that throughout the entirety of the podcast, but um, I, I personally think that we could get it around the end of the year, maybe a little bit before the end of the year, uh, maybe a little bit in January. That's, that's personally what I would expect. No doubt. I 100% agree. I think we'll have it by January 1st. I think it's super, super important. A lot of people are like, why do you need an alpha or beta? The the game's already been made. I mean, you can see from the demo, um, they need feedback. Like, there's a lot of work to do. Feedback is very, very important. In my opinion, this is my opinion, I think that they are very clearly listening to feedback. Um, I think an alpha and beta is very, very important. And the sooner the sooner we can get our hands on it and start playing it and giving it giving feedback, the better it is going to be for classic. Wow. We've also talked about, you know, the the summer time frame uh, mm-hmm. for for release, I honestly think like the later the better. You said the last week of August or first two weeks of September, good, great. That yeah. in my from my point of view, that means a more polished game. Yeah, I think a long true. long beta, long alpha, later release, everything's good in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, you're already, you're already playing, you're already contributing. You just gotta wait for the final product. There's nothing better than contributing to the completion of that product. Like you. It's a, it's a pretty big thing. I think you're right. Release date like in a month, two months, seems for alpha, of course. That's what I mean. Mm-hmm. Is completely feasible. I, I yeah, I think I think alpha. I mean, I think considering the holidays and stuff like that, it might be more towards mid to end January, maybe. Um, the sooner the better. The the only thing that concerns me about an alpha release date, I don't want to say concerns, but kind of perked up my ears, is when they told us that the demo is actually pretty recent build that they had up and running and that what kind of scares me and we talked about this a little at the start and Krom, you mentioned this specifically how much manual work goes into what they're doing they're not just flipping a switch and putting up nost they're having to go back into each individual zone check the environments put water back where it's supposed to be um they have to make sure that you know everything's functioning properly the lighting the quests everything when you consider that much manual work 
for every individual zone. And the fact they had been working on Classic for two years, two years, and we only had two zones recently, that's the one thing that kind of scares me. I don't know. Well, I mean, I, I would say, I mean, there was a lot of people like looking at, like they opened up a sandbox client and uh, Aladar had, had that video from one of his viewers who got, he, he like got past the wall by, I guess, like bugging it out, like he DC'd while running through or something. And uh, I, I think that was kind of what the point of the classic panel was, the, the beginning of it, where uh, Omar went up there and he talked about how uh, they spent so much of the time. And then Brian came in at the end of that, I think, where, where they spent so much of the time uh actually just making the map match like like fleshing out the entire world and i think that was so much of the work that they had to put in um you know we, we've heard the story we've heard the story about how the classic project started it was because there was somebody in the company right there was somebody in the company who with all this oh legacy servers this and that all this stuff was going on somebody in the company said you know what i'm gonna do this as a side project on my own free time i'm gonna try and make vanilla wow 1.12 patch the client i'm going to try and make it run on our servers um and like they they spent their time i think it was you know a couple people maybe one people or one person um uh, this was kind of the story how classic got started they finally made it work and then they kind of presented it to the team they were like hey guys look i got it i got it up i got it running and everybody was like wait what like because it's like yeah sure it, it, the blizzard servers aren't quite like uh you know ovh or, or, or whatever um Whatever, whatever they run the the private servers on so like the fact that they could actually get it to match up and they could stitch it together i think was something that was really big and, and that was really how classic started the that's how the uh, yeah one people i know sorry but uh that's how that's how the whole classic project started that's whenever it first became like a potential for uh for reality right for us to get classic wow and i think that's really cool uh i, I think that you know in chrome you, you you have your 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 background your development background uh, you said like there was so much work that probably went into just this part, but from here on, it's it's it might not be. You can get a lot more progression with a lot less time, uh, as yeah. far as what we can see from the player base, from the player perspective, as opposed to on the back end. Yeah, I, I mean, I I went and studied those videos, like the the breaking through the barrier videos and seeing like the the comparisons of like the zones. They have so much done already. Like they really do. Like the whole world itself is completely restored to the non-cataclysm version. Now it's just a matter of replacing textures, replacing lighting in certain zones that just might not be right. You know, like I noticed little side-by-side -side things like the skybox looks slightly different in certain zones, right? It's not a little toggle switch you can fix to fix that. They're just going back and trying to fix that. Like it's, that's, that's, that's gonna take time, but they have a lot done. Like it really is just fixing little lines here, changing some grass textures here, adding in the old ones. Uh, most of that stuff automatically generates on its own. Like they have the technology to do so. Now it's just, yeah. now they just got to match it. Like, Make sure the yeah. abilities work right. Yeah, they have, mm -hmm. they, they, everything, everything's there. So it's just a matter mm -hmm. of now they're just cross referencing. You saw on those panels, they kept showing the side by side photos. Here was our reference photo. Here's what we have so far. And you can see that they were just slightly off, right? You stare at those photos like, no, the lighting is slightly off. Like take a new picture of Tips out and then try to add some patina and make him look like he's from the 1800s. <laughs> gonna take you some time it, right. it's yeah. gonna take time to do that it's not, a, it's not an instant process down in down in california during blizzcon we, when we uh, met with omar that evening i asked him um so how, are you confident about the summer release time frame and he said yeah we wouldn't have announced it if we weren't confident with it so yeah. like, like tips you know they've been working on classic for a year and a half or two years i really really think and this is the impression i've got remember the first water cooler talk where they were talking about restructuring database information and getting with like their, their different prototypes making sure the game can run on modern hardware and software mm -hmm. I think that has been like 90% of their time, just getting the game to run. And now that it's up, I would speculate um, based off their time frame and, and sort of where we are right now that everything else that they have to do, like these sort of like cosmetic and just like small sort of, you know, like regen rates, you know, auto attack, stuff like that. I think those are pretty, just they can just hammer those out. I would speculate. Yeah, that's what um, I, would, I would guess that yeah, too. I, 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 think, I think that they feel that they are very close. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, hundred percent. They they wouldn't have made an announcement like that if they weren't close. Because to give to give could give people, which which most people would guess, what six to nine month release time schedule, right? Like that's not a lot of time to release a product if you weren't ready. Um, they definitely have a marketable product already. As far as what they even said, like at the demo, this is as far as we got. I would fluff. I would put that up to fluff. I think that's fluff. Um, because no company, of their, of, even of their caliber, no matter how big of a streamer we are, what, we, what we're asking, 
are ever going to give you 100% direct answers or the real answer because like they're it's still a competitive market whether they're working on their old game or not like there are other games out there right now releasing classic servers mm, in, true. in in the wake in the wake of what these guys are doing if they give up any trade secret these other guys could go through like other Take other like lord of, lord of the rings released a cha- server with changes because they probably believe that blizzard's going to stick to that mo- like that formula mm. and i bet blizzard's looking at lord of the rings sales right now and going okay we'll see how well their change server did and what the population thinks there's people who are happy about it, but there's a massive volume of people like, fuck this, I'm not playing because you changed it, mm. right? So Blizzard's going to look at that too. Every time a game is released, you look at every competitor of your genre, see what they're doing, and then try to do better than them. That's why my like as a company, my company is always don't reinvent the wheel, find the guy who made the best one and see if you can make his better, right? There you go. Don't reinvent yeah. the wheel. There's absolutely no reason to do so because you're going you're gonna to fuck it up. You can't, you're not get if there's somebody who's already the best, perfect what he's done, mm-hmm. right? Blizzard's mistake was not perfecting on the systems they already had. They started implementing new systems that that completely negated their original, right? Mm-hmm. And, and now they've gone too far into their new systems where the original systems are non-existent. Right. So they're completely to... non-existent. Right. So, and and now they're slowly trying to implement those things back into the into the modern game, and uh, they already have the things laid out for the original game. So mm-hmm. classic is a roadmap. They're going to look at the failures of other developers doing the classic server releases plug that data into their system and then hopefully create the best version. Blizzard is the top tier quality. They are the go-to when it comes to MMOs. Why are they the longest lasting? Because they are the best. Regardless of negative complaints, they have the survivability, longevity, and the financial backing to show that nobody does it better than Blizzard. Nobody. Um, so they're looking at everything happening right now and they are going to hammer out all of the mistakes everyone else is making, right? I'm sure they looked at RuneScape and said, oh, look at what they did right. Here's what they did wrong. We'll never do that. Right. That's why I, I think that's why they stood firm. If it wasn't in classic, it won't be in classic. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, no post, no post next content, no new content, no content that didn't exist, you know, because that's a lot of people like don't realize like when some people aren't asking for like just burning crusade. Some people are asking for new stuff that never existed just so they could stay in the world. Like, oh, well, maybe they'll add some new quest. Like, no, 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 no. RuneScape did that. Didn't work. Piss people off. It just right. pisses people off. Uh, Blizzard's not going to make that mistake, and that's why they stuck to their guns on that. Where do you think they got that idea? They didn't just pull it out of the air. They watched RuneScape and said, "Ooh, mm-hmm. that could have been something special, but the fan base wasn't happy about this, so we can't do that." They're going to look at Lord of the Rings Online and say the same thing. Well, they've they've made all brought in all of their quality of life changes, as well as even said in their thing, "We're going to bring in our cash shop eventually," which wasn't originally in Lord of the Rings Online, right? Mm-hmm. Like eventually, it's going to be in our classic model. That's people are like fuck off no you can't be serious right well i I think that i I think with osrs uh i think with osrs they they uh they actually grew after they they got to the end they got to the end they actually grew after like post whatever patch content uh so that's whenever osrs started to grow is is whenever they had uh they had new content put in but like in the same vein as like old school as opposed to uh like the the patches and stuff that's what you're talking about right you're talking about more like the patches and expansions and stuff like that uh yeah. versus yeah. like like progressive content um yeah. yeah so i think um <clears throat> i think for me the big thing with the the big thing with me for the the beta alpha uh i think that they should kind of like they should segment it right like hey this week we're going to test they they said it, it's still i guess the debuff slots thing is still on the table we kind of prepared ourselves to like accept 16 debuff slots uh, i think 16 debuff slots can work but i think it has to uh, I, I think it opens the door for tuning of some of the early content with 16 debuff slots. Like if people are doing more damage between that, between 1.12 talents, I think, um, I think that it does open the door for like, Hey, we might like tune the health values here and there, uh, in order to make it not like a total cakewalk. And I don't think it's going to be a total cakewalk. Don't get me wrong, but that's how a lot of people, uh, view it. And I think the best yeah. way for them to test it is like, Hey, if we have like uh, segmented testing periods where, okay guys, this week, uh, we're going to put some vendors in iron forge or wherever, and you can go and you can pick out all your loot. This is the, this is the loot that's available to you. Go off and do the raids. And yeah. maybe you, uh, they, they, they have it with eight debuff slots and they look at the kill times the next week. They do a 16 debuff slots. Look at the kill times, look at the data. Uh, and that way they can see it's like, well, look, I mean, they killed the boss this much faster whenever you had 16 Devo slots. Or they might say, wow, look at this. We we tested it with eight and then we tested it with 16 and there wasn't that big of a difference. And, and 
like people were just wrong because there's a chance of that yeah. too, right? Because that's an inference that, uh, that that we're making, and the inference that a lot of people are making is that well, if you have more debuff slots, debuff slots, uh, it, the damage could be way higher, but it might just be a little bit higher. Um, so I mean, if no one knows the true Blizzard values of even bosses and stuff, like most of that stuff is just guessed right. by private servers, anyways, right? So right, it's, it's it's up to Blizzard to say this is actually what it is, and their word is final. Period. Right. So like, uh, that's why I think, uh, that's why I think the, the beta period is very, very important. I think it's crucial, uh, or like the testing period, alpha, beta, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think it's crucial to find out like the, the right things, uh, like uh, kind of the, the, the right way to approach all those little, uh, the little progressions within the game. Another thing is like the PVP gear update, uh, having the honor system in or not having the honor system in. Um, do you guys, do you guys have any more thoughts on the, on the alpha or beta before we move on to Q and a? Oh, uh, not really. Let's get to Q and A, man. Let's get to the yeah, good dude. stuff. Yeah. I, I, to clarify to one thing, I say because I saw people in chat. I, I I'm not saying old school RuneScape wasn't a success because it was a massive success, right? It was. What I'm talking about was the eventual negative comments that came in when they started releasing like, like post content content that wasn't originally there. I didn't, yeah. Like, I. I well, I'll, I'll let you finish. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just saying that's 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 my only thing is like I understand it was an absolutely great success. And it's still played to this day, still still holds great viewership on Twitch. Um, but I can tell you that a lot of people went back to private old school RuneScape servers because RuneScape stopped delivering the original experience people want. That's all I was saying, was that like once you start adding in changes, you will lose a chunk of your community. Um, that's all. So yeah, old OSRS is great. RuneScape and WoW, uh, Vanilla WoW, old school RuneScape and Vanilla are very, very different games. <laughs> They will experience uh -huh. very, very different problems. Problems that Rune, old school RuneScape experience with population decline um, are unique to RuneScape and will not necessarily be present in, in World of Warcraft. Post change content and the way it bolsters old school RuneScape will not necessarily bolster or bolster or serve to benefit Vanilla WoW. Like it is not a one to one. I think that conflation is a very incorrect one. I see it all the time. And having spent a lot of time playing both of those games, like at a, a lot of time playing those games. They are very, very different games. I think from a casual glance, oh yeah, this is an old version of a game. That's an old version of a game. Oh yeah, one to one, same thing. Very, very different games with very, very unique problems that have to be addressed very, very differently. Very mm -hmm. well said. So guys, we're gonna go ahead and move on into Q and A. Um, if you guys want to tweet at us, hashtag ClassCast in the tweets. Uh, tips out, baby. Chrom official. S Fan TV. Stay safe TV. Uh, I have a question here from Vidget. We'll start on tw we'll start on Twitter and then we we might take some questions from the chat as well, but um, this question is from Vidget. Uh, do you think the reason for them bundling ZG with BWL is that they want every stage to have content for different audiences? Twenty man raids in both stage two and stage three. Um, I'll go ahead and start. Uh, I don't know. I don't think that's necessarily. I I don't think that's necessarily the point. I I think if that's the reason why they're doing it, it. I don't think that's the reason they're doing it because. In vanilla, the content wasn't necessarily for two different audiences. It was, but it wasn't. So vanilla did a really good job. In vanilla while they did a really good job of making the content that was released uh, matter for everybody in some capacity, right? So ZG was introduced to the game, and it was basically like a uh, it was a catch up mechanic for people uh, doing five man content for people doing. Uh, for people going from five-man content without a big rating guild to go into MC and, and maybe into BWL, there's certain things in there. Like I talk about the, the two-handed axe that increases uh, attack power against Dragonkin. I mean, that's literally in there only for BWL uh, if you're like a two-handed Fury Orc Warrior or something. But um, <clears throat> I think that there is like lower tier or lower, lower end gear available in those dungeons and those raids and the same thing with AQ20. But they also have ways of keeping the the higher end players coming to ZG, and that's uh, getting the rep, getting uh, getting the rep for the shoulder enchant specifically. There's off pieces in there that are really really good. There is the um, uh, I, I forgot what the name of the item is. There's a spell hit trinket in there that uh, is really good for tanks on four horsemen, right? Because because taunt is based off of spell hit. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of stuff in ZG that the higher end players want as well. All the spell hit gear that's put in with the bloodvine sets and all that and different recipes. So ZG is something that sure it was introduced as a catch up mechanic, but the best way to introduce a catch up mechanic is not necessarily to put content in there. That is just an easier version. It, it, it's just, it's not just easy and 20 man 
and able to get you better gear with less effort in order to do MC and in order to do BWL. It's something that you have both sides or you have many sides of the player base coming together to do the same thing. And it kind of helps the lower end players out by playing with the higher end players. And it kind of promotes these guys up and it gets these guys what they want because they want their shoulder and chance and they want all that stuff. It's the same thing in MC, right? It's the same thing in MC with like Onslaught Girdle is the example I use a lot of times. It's the, it's the second best plate DPS belt in the game. And you get that in Molten Core after the 1.5 patch. Um, the next best plate belt is Girdle the Mentor off of Resuvius and Nax. So stuff like this, I, I think, I think in Vanilla WoW, they did a really good job, really good job at doing it like this. Uh, I, I think it would be very, um, they'd be very misguided if that was the reason that they did it in order to, to have content for different types of people. Um, if they thought that the reason to put in a 20 man and a 40 man in phase two and three would be to have content for different types of people. Cause really the content is for everybody, you know? So what, what, what do you guys think about that? I, I kind of rambled on for a little bit, but about the concept of having in phase two and three ZG release with BWL, uh, AQ, AQ 20 and AQ 40 are obviously going to be together, but, um, I guess really more specifically, it's about ZG and BWL coming out together. I agree. I agree with what you said. I have really nothing more I could say that you did that you didn't. You know, <laughs> mm-hmm. kind of covers it. I, I don't see. I don't see a reason to do that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it was very well said. Ramble or not. Here, here's my mm-hmm. thing with the content release timeline. Like, I actually really understand why they're thinking of doing it this way. Of course, it's not one to one with Vanilla WoW. Of course, it'll upset upper end private server players, but I actually really, really understand why they're considering doing it. I actually fully expect them to do a four a four patch content release timeline. I fully expect them to do that. Um, I think that's what they will probably stick with just for the sake of simplicity, um, re-releaseability um, and understandability for your average player. I really think they will do it. Is it, is it, what, I, is it what I prefer? No, I think maybe a six or seven point release timeline would be better, but I actually really understand why they're thinking of doing it. Yeah, I mean, it's good to understand it though, but you know, from your understanding from private servers and your understanding of like survivability and longevity, like like you said, if if it's our job for feedback, it's you, you got to make sure that you keep pushing that subject. Yeah, you know, if they, they they make a four point they make a four point release. That's that's fine for them, and I get you know, it's great to understand them because I understand them too from a, from a technical standpoint. I understand them, but. I, I can also see like the financial gain of taking it slower. Yeah. Um, and and I mean, too. yeah, like I, I was just going to say like, just because like something is like four is like a nice number or something. It's a nice, pretty number. Um, I mean, it doesn't mean like once you come up with a formula, once you do it once, you can just do it over and over again. Right. And I don't, uh, I really think this, I think that just because they release a, a fresh server, a certain, or like the, the, they release classic a certain way, does it mean that nothing will change from the first set to the the second set of fresh servers? Again, like it's not 100% confirmed, but it's an inference we're making based on what we heard. And they're they're having they're, they they want to have something that works for like 15 years. Um, I mean, that's how private servers did it. Like you know what? Whenever we we did this, this this didn't actually work out right. So let's change the timeline a little bit here. Uh, now, obviously, they do want something formulaic. They want something that's going to work every time. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get the answer 100% right the first time. Um, I don't know. I mean, that's, uh, that's just something I, I would keep an eye on maybe like, but I think as far as like phases and stuff like that goes, I think they're going to want to get the right number of phases the first time. That's what I, that, that's kind of how I feel about it. Um, I definitely feel that whatever they decide to go with, that is what they will go with for every new iteration of classic. Wow. Every fresh server, every path moving forward, it's going to be a template. It's going to be frozen in time and they're going to apply it. Yeah, every, I, I tend to agree with days, that. Every I, I, days, yeah. I think that's their goal. That's their goal is to, is to get that template and yeah. to get it right the first time. Yeah, uh, I'm sure that that's a big effort of theirs. Yeah, I think they would like to. I think they, I, I really think they would like to. But whatever they figure out, it's it's got to be something that um. It's got to be something that that just like works right, um, for for them to do every time. So I I don't know. I think I think in a perfect world they they would just get it right the first time. But we'll see how that goes. Um, let's see. Uh, this one's from Curl. 
Have you been lucky enough to experience the Project 60 event yesterday? What are your thoughts on an even more packed starting zone in Classic Drops? Don't you think it will explode in the start and ruin the experience? Uh, no, not necessarily. I mean, we uh, like we, we did Project 60 yesterday, and, and uh, after this, I know uh, Stay Safe's going to continue his stream. I'm going to continue the stream, and uh, we're, we're both going to be doing Project 60 stuff. But... Um, <clears throat> I don't think that it's necessarily just going to like blow up the servers or anything. I mean, it, I mean, it could, uh, if you know, if, if if there's just so many people logging in. But I think if there's like queue times and uh, the difference between Project <laughs> Sixty, the difference between Project Sixty and what would happen on Classic release is there there's guaranteed no mob no no shared mob tags. Um, well, I guess not guaranteed, but but they didn't talk anything about it. I would really hope not because that's something that's not vanilla. And then. The, the concept of Impression 60, the, the sharding is there for sure. Uh, and they don't know for sure if they're going to have sharding in, uh, in retail, right? So sharding and stuff, like, that's, that's a stability thing in retail. Wow. Uh, in Classic, the reason for sharding would basically be so people could, like, actually kill stuff and get out of it. Uh, what do you guys think yeah. about that? So on Asmogold's stream, uh, I think it was just yesterday afternoon, we saw when he tried to log into his Project 60 character on Moonguard, everything was, it was like, like, there was like over a minute of delay. It was terrible. It was rough. Um, I think there was another group event, like 150 people, a couple raid groups, like a week or was it Soda Poppin that did it? And the GMs actually told them you need to disperse um, because for service to build, you, you guys have to break break this up. I'm not sure exactly what that event was, but I heard about it sort of briefly. Mm -hmm. um, I think that every sort of server setting they have, and I, I'm not an expert on this, but this is sort of my understanding. Every sort of server setting they have right now for BFA is set that way um with in, in conjunction with charting mm -hmm. um it, it is uh, what i've been told is that they can sort of change settings to help alleviate the problem that we saw in asmgold stream yesterday i don't think it'll be exactly the same i think that assuming that oh this is how it is in bfa this is exactly how it will be in classic wow i think that's sort of a false assumption and sort of a bad premise yeah yeah, I definitely hope so. I mean, obviously, yeah, when they know a game is coming out, when they're anticipating, you know, the millions of players, hopefully they do adjust things. Because I was there for that launch yesterday. I think you guys were there too, that Project 60 launch. Yikes, if Classic is like that, you know? I think the only well, people yeah, who are going to suffer they, with that are... No, go ahead. They, they have the capacity to spawn a bunch of, like, NPC players and try to move around and and do stuff they they know exactly the sort of problems they will face they probably watched the asmgold stream the other day where he had these problems they know exactly how these problems they know exactly what the problems are and how they're going to manifest um you can imagine like they don't want that for launch day they don't want this for aq gates they don't want this for world bus lights they don't want this for all track valley they don't want these problems i i'm 99.9 percent .9 sure that they know that they are a problem um like there's no way they don't there's no way that they're just that you know head burned in the sand I'm I'm sure that they are changing things. Like it will not be exactly how it is in BFA. That's that's my assumption. Yeah, I, I really yeah, that's not good. Um, and like we like we've said like repeatedly over and over again, uh, the preference is no sharding. They said they're they're looking at the best option. They're trying to figure out what they want to do. Um, they're trying to figure out what they want to do that's going to be uh the best. So it's like whether that's dynamic respawns or sharding or or some other system. And we talked about that all earlier. Yeah, we talked about all of that earlier. But um, that's one thing that I think, uh, uh, like all of us here and and the overwhelming majority of the community does not uh, is not a huge fan of the sharding. Um, so I mean, I saw I saw two forty man raid groups like organize on the classic demo. Everyone casting mass amount of spells at once, and I never didn't experience even the slightest bit of lag like I do when I do like the brawler stuff when you're doing South Star versus Tory Mill or whatever. You, you literally have to turn your settings down to zero on a supercomputer to play on that. Uh, that that was a, it was already a night and day compared to BFA and Classic. Like if you can have 80 people in the same yeah. area as each other and you're not lagging and it's in Classic Wild, then they're already doing right. But like BFA's version, I think it's a graphical thing mainly too. I think it's taxing. You know, there's way more like there's so much more going on visually in BFA that demands PC power. Um, that doesn't really it's not really an issue in Classic. I think the only people who are going to be having that issue, the guys who if Blizzard leaves in the, the graphic sliders, the guy who maxes everything out, he's going to be the other one going, oh, frick, this is really difficult. I can't, <laughs> I can't play. Yeah. My, my eight graphics cards are still burning out. Like, yeah. I don't know whether t people could argue Blizzard should have the technology or not, but I don't know any game that can hold 80 people in the same area as each other and not lag. Right. I don't know any game. 
there's not one that I've played. Where yeah. They could all be in the same spot and we're not lagging, especially since every other game is graphically more demanding than, than any oh, Blizzard wow. game in existence. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I mean, really. you, you raise a great point. On the classic demo we had between mm -hmm. Tip's turn and my turn, I think we both at points have people in the same spot, all spamming abilities, spamming text, whatever. Um, that that would leg out a server and be a fake. There is already difference. They've, they've already adjusted something. That's actually a great point. Something has already been changed to accommodate for those extra player burns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think, and, and like, I, I really wish I knew more about like the, the back-end development side of things to, to really be able to speak to that more. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really all just inference at this point, yeah? Um, yep. So do we, uh, let's see, let's, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, guys, we'll take a few more questions from Twitch chat. If you guys have any more questions for us, um, yeah, we because because we want to. Uh, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to take a few more questions. Sorry, I got semi distracted. Do you want to do you want to go ahead and talk about Project Sixty for a second? And yeah. What, what I, we're gonna do with that? So so basically, we we've talked about this before, guys. A, a Project Sixty <laughs> is going on right now. Uh, it's it's like a fun community event. This is what Project 60 is. It's a fun community event where uh, for people who happen to be playing Retail WoW, what we're doing is we're leveling up to 60 on Moon Guard. Uh, we have a couple guilds. Uh, classic Alpha is one guild. The other guild is Classic Chads. Um, so you can you know you can you can whisper us for invites. And uh, it's just a way for people to go up. We're gonna go to level 60. We're gonna group up together. We're gonna do dungeons, uh, do the raids at 60, and it's it's like a fun community event. And it'll last for a little bit. Uh, maybe like a week or so, maybe maybe a couple weeks. But at a certain point, what we want to do is we want to go beyond Project 60 and we want to turn our Project 60 into a Project 70. And the basically, in order to get into Project 70, what the requirement is going to be is you're going to have to get the achievement for killing Nefarian, C'Thun, and Rag on that character. So basically the idea is, and you have to start with a brand new character. The idea is you go through level 60 and you do all the bosses. Obviously there's no, you know, Nax was, Nax was wrath, right guys? So yeah, yep. we want to, <laughs> we want to, we want to do this and then we want to move on and, and continue our guild into project 70. And, um, who knows? We might, we might even move it into an 80. We're, we're not sure yet. We don't, we haven't looked that far ahead, but, uh, the idea would be to start now to go through it. And it's just a way for people to make friends. Um, people to make friends, get involved with one another. Uh, we can, we can group with people, we can raid with people. And, uh, I, we haven't a hundred percent decided like how, how everything's going to work out, but there'll be multiple raid groups. There'll be multiple, um, just constant dungeon groups running the whole time. So I think it could be, yeah. uh, I think it could be something that's really fun to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is to say, if you want to do project 70, a couple of weeks or however long down the road, you should be doing project 60 on moon guard Alliance side right now. Join one of the two guilds, probably as funds guild classic chads. I'll try to join that guild and I can help give out invites yeah. to people and get people involved. Um, I'll be streaming at tips of doing it. Crom, everyone's doing it. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, like I was going to say, if you want to participate in project 70 or wherever else that leads, um, you need to be doing project 60 level up, play within the rules. Um, do Ragnaros after you Ragnaros progress on a blacking layer blacking layer you progress on a Cthulhu and from there uh, You'll chill until we until we announce a project 70 date So once you're 60 lock your XP and then we're gonna take care of business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and there's certain rules. Uh, I was right. just gonna say there's certain rules um, Like no no BOAs uh, basically the idea is to play it as vanilla as possible um, That's that's basically the no idea behind it. Yeah, no mount till 40 just just try and play the game as vanilla as possible So no heirloom items or anything like that um, now some things because of balance, they said specifically for 60, we got to look at this for 70. Like it, it kind of sucks, but like no engineering because the engineering items are too completely bonkers for level 60. But, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll get you guys a link to the rules in the chat right now. But, um, but yeah, so, so we'll go on. We're, we're still, we're taking a few more questions. Uh, if there's any more questions, if not, we'll, uh, <clears throat> call it a day. Uh, let's see. Um, I just want to say one, one quick thing about the projects um, to incentivize you guys a little bit more in patch 7.3.5 in case you guys didn't know this blizzard changed the leveling so it actually takes a lot longer to level now uh, it's a lot more fun and some of the quests in the world are decently challenging you know a little bit closer to what they were back in the day and on top of that the raids were tuned as well they were changed a little bit too so if you guys are thinking back to like kungan's old project 60s where they literally like did them naked um, it's it's a little bit more challenging than that and p70 gets even harder p80 even harder so it is fun even at the end game but yeah go ahead us mm -hmm. so here's a question from toxin uh i have a question on behalf of the two guys from before 
Give us your insight as well as Chrome State statement tips. If you guys are interested in saying something about it, on how you'd feel with Blizzard taking Classic into Burning Crusade and eventually into Wrath, or just making separate servers for Burning Crusade, Wrath, or Burning Crusade, wait, Burning Crusade, Wrath, and then having Wrath release on the same Burning Crusade servers, uh, you don't see it happening. Um, so yeah, basically we, um, we, and this is something that comes up kind of often, I think that it does make sense. It, it all depends on how much money that Classic makes, if you're Blizzard. Like, if, if Classic does well, which I think it will do very well, uh, I think we could see Burning Crusade servers. I would like to see Burning Crusade servers put on... Uh, I would like to see Burning Crusade servers put on a new server, fresh server, that you have the ability to, to copy your character to. That's what, I, that's what I think they should do. I think you should have, have the ability to copy your character there. Uh, I think if you start from level 1 on a Burning Crusade server, almost always there's a massive horde population imbalance. Uh, just massive, massive, massive. Um, good, yep. Yeah, so... As God intended. <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's not really good. bad. It's actually really, really yeah, bad. Yeah, it's really yeah, bad. That, that's, that is what's killed literally every single Burning Crusade private server, so they've got to do something to prevent that from happening. I think probably having the OG classic servers turn into TBC servers um, is the best option. Then if you want to keep your, char your OG level 60 full tier 3 character... At level 60, they can have like a, a stasis server where you can right. you, you copy your level 60 character over there if that's what people want. Mm -hmm. um, do I think those servers, those stasis servers will be very active long term? No, but I understand some people might have like an attachment to those characters. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think that's probably a good option. But yeah, yeah I, I think the best way is to have each each vanilla server turn into a TPC server and then TPC server turns into Wrath, whatever, whatever, whatever. I think that's mm -hmm. the best way to do it which is actually just how the game happened originally. Now, I think that once the first wave of vanilla servers turn into TBC servers, at that exact time, they should offer fresh classic servers. Because if they don't, they're back in the situation where if you want to replay, like, let's say you missed classic WoW. Let's say you missed vanilla WoW and the first iteration of classic WoW. Mm -hmm. you're, you're where we are right now. Like if you're on the options to play a private server. Um, so I think that they should reoffer uh, new classic servers fresh, for people right. that might want to re yeah, fresh that people want to replay or play for the first time if they miss the first two times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, forced it's, transition is a bad idea. That's that's actually the most no changes that you can possibly be. That's how it is. Yeah. Well, of course, I mean, I mean that that's no changes and everything like that. For, but forced trans, I, I mean, the the negative sides of forced transition are definitely rough. Um, you know, I think if a person wants to keep, I think they, they release a fresh classic server, roll everybody over to a, a post uh Naxarama server you have the option of copying your character over and playing on TPC as well as keeping your character over on that that Nax server I just think forcing you to like say goodbye to that character forever like it, it may be a no maybe no changes but like I mean a that, lot of a lot of people didn't like that and, and like I said earlier people, yeah. it was that like, Swifty clip I, yeah like yeah. if I want to play if I want to play TPC but also keep my you know my Nax here guy over there He'll, he'll stay over there like he, he's just there like he has no effect on my tbc character like my tbc character is on his own he's moved the, on i'm playing you mean him. like uh the idea of a stasis server yeah exactly yeah, yeah I, that's I like, exactly yeah. that's exactly what they should do yeah they shouldn't i just, I they just shouldn't don't, I just don't want people i just don't want it to like oh as soon as like okay so now i want to take my 60 character and move him to tbc i don't want hit the, the 60 character to just be gone off of that vanilla stuff forever i just want a copy of him there i can leave him there i can log in the class like anytime i want go back to that old school mm -hmm. post next content anytime i want even if the server's dead like don't force anybody over to to, to delete their character and, well not de you know what i mean not delete him, but remove him from classic and push him into tbc and then you can never go back to that guy again you can never go back to your class yeah that's stuck around i don't like that idea yeah you I mean, shouldn't might... no push no yeah. bully yeah, basically, yeah, I agree. Like, you shouldn't you shouldn't have that situation where, um, basically, people are people are forced into not being able to play their vanilla character anymore. Because, like, and and you know, Chrom, you said it specifically yourself. You want to get everything. You want to go and you know you want to go back and you might be full tier three and you want to get your Thunder Fury. Like, there's a lot you want to accomplish on that one character. So, yeah, which well, is which is the service that the Stasis servers would per would serve, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, yep. Let's take let's take one maybe two more questions. Um, Saren asked something in the chat. It's very interesting because my opinion on this has kind of changed lately. Really? He asks, yeah. Serendipity asks, cross realm BGs or no? Could be really really bad Q times considering some servers will have seventy thirty faction balance. What do you guys think about it? So, I say no. So, well, well, this is something that we 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 talked about this in the past. We talked about this in a really early classic cast, and uh, I said no as well. And 
stays if you said no then too i believe but but playing devil's advocate you also brought up a really good point it's like look cross realm battlegrounds were added in 1.12 and they were added in at the end of vanilla because it was kind of like a necessary evil for some of these uh people sitting in like 40 minute queues to try and get into a battleground so then that's whenever the concept of battle groups first came in now right. it was it was like you know, that eventually led to, you know, what we have now with the cross realm stuff and, and people really don't like that in the, the sense of server community. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how they approach that. I, uh, they specifically said in the panel that they don't foresee people, they, they don't want to have people grouping with people from other servers. Didn't they specifically say that phrase, like grouping yep. with people from other servers won't be a thing. Uh, so if that goes into, well, battlegrounds, you're grouping with other people from other servers. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't think they'll do it, but or at least I don't think they're planning on doing it. But who knows? I mean, it might end up being a a, a big issue because that's what happened in vanilla. Is there were some servers with like a seventy thirty faction balance, and people were sitting in queue for like forty minutes. So hopefully not. Hopefully that doesn't end up being a problem. But uh, I because I, I don't want to see it. Dude, that was brought out like the the cross cross realm PVP was brought in like after next, correct? Remember yeah, it was it was the patch next after next. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because that's yeah, really, cause and I I, I think that they probably added that in because they knew that with TBC with patch 2.0, which followed like four or five months after, they they were going to be adding that for for arena and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not sure how much like after like researching it more, I'm not sure how much they really wanted that in vanilla WoW as much as they were getting ready for TBC. That Maybe seems to be the, it makes sense. That, it yeah. really does make sense. I mean, if you look at the way the patches were laid out, it, it's that's how. Mm -hmm. Um. I'll, I'll tell you though, like as far as like having intra server battle group battlegrounds, so everyone in your battlegrounds you actually are actually on your server. There's nothing more badass than leveling up. You're level 27, and you know you're fighting a horde player in whatever zone, and you know his name, you remember his name. He he ganks you, you gank him, and you're level 53. Now you see him again, you kill him again, and then you're now you're level 60. You're, you're rank seven. You're farming honor. You see that same guy in the battleground. You remember that guy. Like having that name recognition is, in my opinion one and one to vanilla WoW. that's what vanilla WoW is all about and so i think definitely having cross server battlegrounds definitely undermines that that aspect of vanilla WoW. i agree those rivalries those in-game rivalries are part of it it's really it, is part of it. and as far as farming honor with long battleground queues it doesn't mean you can't farm honor it just means you have to farm honor in a different way so you, let's say you're on the faction that has super long queues or a half hour 45 minute long queue you're queuing up for battleground and rather than you know getting an instant queue now you're flying to, to Searing Gorge or you're flying to uh, wherever else and you're farming honor in open world. You're actually incentivized to do open world PvP to rank, which yeah. I don't even think is necessarily a bad thing either. You just have to rank differently. I like that. So I, that's I, how that's I feel. A really good, that's a good way to put it. It really is a good way to put it because, uh, I mean, I, there's a couple, there's a couple, I won't, you know, just because it's private service stuff, I won't promote the streams, but there's a couple, like, you know, ranking streamers out there that are doing, like, push rank 14 on a regular basis. Um, and I see them do that very same thing. Like they'll 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 queue up for a BG. Takes a while. They get like a, they get in a five man group with their buddies, and they're just out world PVP until it pops, like all day. That's what they're doing. They're laughing. They're enjoying themselves. They're world PVPing. They're sniping world buffs off of other raids. They're just just enjoying their time out in the world, farming honor the only way they can. And then the BG pops. They have a blast. They either win, they lose, and they go right back to it. They just keep doing it over and over and over again. Uh, and it's actually really fun to watch, and it's really fun to do because I've been there too. Those long queue times you can't avoid. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, um, I think that's it for us today. Uh, I know Stay Safe is gonna is gonna keep streaming after. I'm gonna keep streaming after. Uh, guys, if you haven't followed Crom yet, twitch.tv slash Crom, Twitter Crom official. If you guys haven't followed myself, Stay Safe tips out. Um, Stay Safe TV and tips out, baby. Also check out our YouTube channels, uh, Twitters. Everything's below our names. Do appreciate you guys joining us today. Um, We'll be back. We'll be back next week, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Take it easy, boys. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye. See you in Project on, 60, man. Yeah, yeah thanks for having me, guys. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course, dude. All right, see you guys.